Geography semi-finalists at the World Championships, Sealand! I washed my hands, okay? Okay, I did, I swear. I did. You gotta, you gotta believe me, okay? From the time that I was dragging myself across the floor to the time I was eating the raw, you know, the onion. I washed my hands. Shorty Sam, thank you so much for the four months of the Twitch Prime. Shoba Whippy, thank you for the tier one. Welcome to the Hammers. Mitra, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Welcome to you, everybody. It's a beautiful day to play some football manager. Woo! A dyslexic man walks into a club. Danushka, unfortunately, we've heard that one before, but thank you for the 13 months as part of the Hammers. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. But yes, unfortunately, we had her for first time in the stream, and you're not the only one. I saw a couple people say, that's the first time I've ever been in a Zealand stream, ever. All right, well, welcome. We're gonna have some fun today. We have uh, been, we are scouting the... Uh, we are scouting our pants off right now. We're on July 3rd. We're right in the this thick of things into contract gold you mines, you know. I'm still waiting on your check. Yeah, well, you know, GJC, hey, the, there's things they take a long time. Mail delivery uh, at times. Thank you for the five months of the Twitch Prime, dude. I appreciate it. We demand God's Power Tower. Any news? Announce God Power Tower. Uh, we're still... The club is still evaluating all of its God power options, including tower. Yes. First time I've been watching your vids for months. Well, welcome. First stream for me. Everybody say hi to the people who are here for the first time. I mean, goodness, it's nerve wracking. You're on Twitch. You're like, who's this? This new experience. Calling it Slatan Zealand Rex. I mean, that is, uh, it's a great name. Zlatan Zealand Rex. Why is there like something on the edge of my water? I don't want, I don't want that. Hi to the people that are here for the first time. See that? That's great manners. Thank you for the wonderful manners. Watch the YouTube for a bit. Subscribe today now for a stream. Well, Perry is moving in hyperdrive here. Just straight forward. Baby, we shall name him Paul Nolan. That works for me, Chris. I appreciate the nine months as part of the hammers. Can finally catch some streams. Move back to Canada from Korea. My goodness, that's going to be tough in the COVID age. But congratulations on getting that done enough to be able to watch the stream at least. Sheesh! Oliver, thank you for the tier one and welcome to the hammers. Any snow in New York? I don't know, let me check. Hey! Any snow outside today? Okay, thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Bob downstairs says no snow. So I'm gonna assume there's no snow. Bob wouldn't lie to me. Thank you for the 100 bits, TV John. One more important piece of business that we absolutely must get to before we go any further. Hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Hi. How can atheists contact God? What's up? That was actually funny, as in like, what, what's up? Cause you're like, you're atheist. So nothing, you know, like, so what is up, right? But also what's up? It was clever. It was a, a you a thinking man's joke, right? Like a thinking man's joke. That's just, just good. That's good. All right, we're here. I'm just, I was looking through, I was looking through the trial lists. Uh, that we've got going on right now. And 
there's some that we like and there's some that we don't you know all these guys that just came out of their end of contract lander all let's say uh like if I, if we had the ability to sell somebody with somebody that we had somebody else was interested in that'd be really nice just not happening right now if you weren't with us yesterday we have uh we have been pillaging we have been raiding the u20 world cup recently it's been really Yo nice -E -E. good evening i'm an early bird today up the dorfers yeah fierce pierce thank you for the five dollars how you doing and thank you again for the the 100 gifted subs you threw down yesterday it was all-time hammers performance mark mr mark bridge Your joke is a B. I understood the joke. It was solid. Your joke is a B. It was the what's up joke. You knows what I'm saying. Why would we be mean to YouTube chat? I mean, chat, they just can't be here. There's a lot of people that you can't be here on a particular stream, but they want to keep up with what's going on. There's no reason for us to be mean to YouTube. You know, no frick off here, right? That's not what we're about. All right, let's just get groovy. And let's get down to business. We've got important business to take care of today. Chronic, thank you for the tier one. And uh, welcome to the hammers. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. You know, make sure you get in the subsection of the Discord. And just grab your football manager and we're going to have a great time. Or maybe you put me on your TV. That's always the one that throws me off the most. People send a picture like, hey man, watch the stream. And I'm just on their TV. Whoa, dude. Whoa. Totes wild, dude. What about you, Alex Keshkis? We've, we've decided before that we liked this guy, Alex Keshkis. He's in the prime of his career. Intelligent, technically proficient, big, strong, not slow. Has a reasonable left foot. You could conceivably play out of the back with Echos Keshkis. I like it. I like it. Tibor Vlitnik, no. Dominik Starkel. Why are the Austrians just so not as good? When, when we bring them out on trial, they're just, they are so, they are so not as good. I do still have Bun Burger. I do. Hey man, just got promotion for Honorama National with Wrexham. Any advice? Uh, if you got out of Honorama National League 2, continue to play like you're the better team. I really like Cash Kush. But seriously, if you are like good enough to get promoted out of the Vonorama National, you're going to be good enough in League Two. It's when you start getting to League One in the championship that things can get more dicey. League one to championship might be the biggest gap to cover in the game, but you know what? You'll cover that when you get there. Right now in League two, you're all right. A lot of people do double promotion because Vonorama Nationals, there's a very small window to get out at the top. And anytime there's like a, you, anytime there's a super small window, then you usually have to raise your level past the level of the people at the bottom of the next league. So you'll immediately be competitive and at the right level for League two. I'm just here for the 17 year old American Vander something. Vander Hurst, and he's great. But he also is 17. He doesn't want to leave the United States yet. He's drinking too much Kool-Aid. Do we have any right backs that we were looking at? Uh, no. So that's great. We have the one who's accepted a contract already, the American, and there's Niels Butzen. But Niels Butzen is super duper hyped up, but doesn't seem to be bringing it. He just has that high stamina work rate thing going on. So let's hit continue. A lot of things are going to start happening once we hit continue. We brought in one of uh, performance analysts, Alexander Nuri's in. 
and we have landed our two sports scientists all right the sports science team has gotten a revamp which is wonderful we had to redo some staff as well because we're a much bigger club than the last time we really took a hard look at our staff con myers out decided to go to sturm graz that's fantastic love that love the fact that that happened So guys, this was my offer for the general manager, for the director of football. The club feel that we do not need another uh, director of football, which is fascinating because, you know, the first one's out of a contract and he's very, very bad, Lucas Fisher. But he's also one of the managing directors of the board. And so... We uh, wanted to see if, if we you know, we signed another one that if we'd be able to fire that guy, but uh, but no, we are stuck with our director of football overlord, managing director of the board, Lucas Fisher, who has informed me that his replacement can't be signed because he in fact already exists. I do not believe that this is a bug. I mean, this is a real life sort of situation. It's just annoying that it's happening here or now. Well, I could use a board takeover to get a new general manager and a new director of football. I could absolutely use a board takeover. Doxy, thank you for the three months. Congrats on toasting your bacon, but odd ads spoke. Wow. You've just taken that other level. You know, you've taken that other level. Five gifted subs, Red Jacket, Fruits Day, Majestic Unicorn, CJ Prague, Get Good Plays. Welcome to the Hammers. You have the bacon, you've got emotes, subsection of the Discord, you're part of an elite online gaming <gasps> community. I like to think ZSAC, the staff who sent in the package, now it's their social media guy. So fortunately, I don't think I, I, I can't get my grimy hands on him to fire him odd edspo thank you so much for making five people's days it, it, it does mean a lot in this holiday season was unemployed after my masters and one of your mods even offered to buy me a meal started working a month ago so things are looking up oh my goodness shoot we try and cultivate a community of niceness. I'd wish I'd known that as well. Would have been able to try and uh, to try and help out. But I'm glad that you're you're on your feet and able to share the love again. That's a very kind thing to do. That is a very kind thing to do. So thank you for that, Duffy. Thank you for the two on the prime, by the way. Just wondering uh, during saves or PA's fixed numbers, uh, they can't be improved. Correct. Potential ability is locked at the start of a save, but players never actually reach their potential ability. So in a sense, it's variable, right? Like if a player's potential ability is 165, they're not like, they're not always going, most of the time they won't get close to 165. You know what I mean? So it is, fixed but it's variable in the sense that what you do with that player will greatly affect their ability to reach that potential if that makes sense so like it is fixed yes but at the same time it's not annoying and it's not a bad system because it, there's so many different things that can affect you reaching the potential so the, it, it's essentially variable even though at the start of a save that potential ability is fixed it's locked in it is where it is that's how it be. That's what it do. This is the wrong shortlist. We need to put this on the end of contract shortlist. Bada bing, bada boom. You know what I'm saying? Bada boom. We just don't have room to so finish those scouting reports on guys that are fringe contributors, even if they are on the good side of their range. People that we'd want to have 
but on cheaper contracts. Pedro Pinto, this is a classic Portuguese third division player. He's going to be a skilled, unathletic, deep-lying playmaker who feels like he belongs at the top of the world. Availability of my client. No, your client is certainly available. Komalafe, no. Olalade, I keep this guy pops up every five seconds. You know what? He hates big matches, and so I don't want him. I'm going to go ahead and drop Olalade. I've had enough. Oh, we've started scouting Ronald Verheyen, and we can stop scouting Ronald Verheyen. Can confirm he is not good enough. We're not going to waste our time. But we are still pillaging the U20 World Cup here. We're still pillaging the U20 World Cup. If you weren't with us on the stream yesterday, we made some big signings. Anybody take into consideration the opponent's pitch size when preparing their tactic? Very rarely. Sometimes fields are super wide. That provides other opportunities, but normally it's all within a range. Certain leagues have it locked where it has to be in a range. Uh, Mystery, thank you for the $3. I appreciate it. Any news on the release or delay of the American database? Uh, it is coming out very soon. I don't want to lock anything in and force read the mead to do the impossible, but it is coming out very soon. I am in regular conference with Reed on the progress of the testing. Love your videos and streams bursting. Thank you, my dude. Alan Cruz is gone. Yeah. We let Alan Cruz go. We let Hassan Indom go. Rasner was sold for 250,000 and a youth player named Adam Makic was sold for 3,000. We did, however, bring in Karim Conte from St. Bruton who is athletic, tackling, passing, you know, pretty just a uh, guy that I can count on. We brought in Paul Nolan, the 18-year-old American, a, uh, a very dedicated, committed player. He plays his pants off. I debated off. a flat earther once. He stormed off saying he'd walk to the edge of the earth to prove me wrong. I'm sure he'll come around. Yeah, he's basically an American Conte. And then this is Igor Vidic, who can fly. He's 18. He also has great potential. He's Canadian from the Canadian U-20 national team. Uh, he's got enough technically about him that he can be dangerous when he gets forward. But this is really just all about his ability to fly up the field. I'm going to go B plus on that, Fierce Pierce. It was good. It had me going. Then Shishkin, who's basically like a target man, but also wing. And he's 6'3". Could you take a look at Kelvin, John? I don't know what happened there, but uh, yeah. I think he's good pressing forward. That can maybe be a sub for you. That That's fine. Thank you for a $5 donation. That counts for a lookup. Russell, thank you for the 13 also. But remember, PG, Russell. PG. PG. I got my eye on you. Love from Brazil, my man. Gabby's, I appreciate it. Thank you for the three. We like Ilya Shishkin. Uh, and then our starting striker for this year, Nick Venema. A little light on the ball control, but he throws himself into the area. He's got good athleticism. He's not a bad passer. He's off the ball's fine. Uh, he, he, he gets involved. You know, he plays the way that Grieger was meant to play. And that's very helpful because Grieger was on loan and had to go back. So we brought in Venema from the Dutch League, and now he's here. And now he's here. Well, the wide target man from FM20 has uh, has returned. I don't know if we're going to go with the Liu Yu Hao Great Wall of China formation. I don't know if we're feeling confident enough to go with the Liu Yu Hao Great Wall of China formation. But we'll never forget the Liu Yu Hao Great Wall of China formation.
Do 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 do. Hey, uh, Dion, you interested yet? Nope. Cool. Great. Love that for us. Give me expired contracts. Thank you. And then give me that. Tomas Durso. Mary Chrysler, my wife is really mad at the fact that I have no sense of direction. So I packed up my stuff and write. You know, the, fir the first two times I heard that, I really loved it. And it is a great dad joke, damn it, Dutch. It is. But unfortunately, we have heard it before. Thank you for the 16 months as part of the hammers. Servalor! <laughs> Three gifteds. Pico UK, my pace and Hado, you're in the hammers just like that. Boom. Brilliant. Thank you, Servalor, for the gifteds. And we have Shabba Whippy with the $5 donation. A small on eight oak bird be good if I had a dad joke about that, wouldn't it? You know what's funny? The only reason that I get that dad joke is because I've heard it before, because I had to have it explained to me the last time it was told. A wooden tit, which is, you know, it's a wooden, the, that's a bird. Is Snow and Football Manager by default or is it some special mode? It's in, no, it's in football. Uh, all weather conditions are in Football Manager by default. No grave concerns there that you're going to miss out on something because it's, you know, you haven't added a mod to Football Manager to have snow. It's in there by default. Gates, I appreciate the Twitch Prime, dude. Welcome to the Hammers. And John, I appreciate the 101 bits. Whew. But thank you, Shabba Whippy. And don't, you know, don't let this be a discouragement. Because there are plenty of, uh... <laughs> there are plenty of dad jokes in the world that we haven't heard yet. But we have, we've already, we've hit a couple today that we have. Yeah, these guys were at clubs, and so they don't want to, they don't want to hop over. But we can at least hit all of the B-minuses on our end of contract list. That would be nice. Anderson and Tommaso Panico trying to work their way back from injury as we work our way through our preseason. We're on July 4th! <laughs> yes! We really want to sell Prisca Kenne. He dude opted out of his contract with 18 months to go. You can't trust him. That bothers me. I want to just move him, move on, get a different right back into the system. Gives me the heebie-jeebies having somebody opt out of their contract with 18 months left in the contract. Ah, Francis Mwepu. He does actually have an appearance for Zambia, which isn't an awful national team, but... Pressing forward Ronnie. Really doesn't have the athleticism to do that. I don't think you have the facilities for that, big man. Hey, there's another center back. Grant Hall, 31-year-old Englishman. Let me guess, League One. All oh, championship with Middlesbrough. Been in the championship for a very long time and seems to have played himself out of it. And that is why he's here. And here's a Croatian, Dominic Stumberger. You can understand why I thought this guy was Austrian. Either way, he's out of the way. Michael Brandner. Yeah, well, he's a little overhyped with the star ratings, don't you think? Joaquin Mateo, you... Uh. Versatility's nice. Can play across the whole front line. Double hernia for Javi Vasquez. That doesn't help. When you are literally on a month-to-month -month contract, picking up a month-and-a-half injury does not help your case. <sighs> Gather all the burgers. I know. That, that was our initial goal, was to collect a team made up of burgers. We call it McDonald's. It was going to be great, but it hasn't worked out that way, right? The burgers have been a little disappointing. I'd like to say, I'd like to think the burgers let us down, right? I'd like to think the burgers let us down. So I can't, I can't possibly take the blame for this. We've been let down by the burgers. <sighs> Maybe we get the C pluses in too. We might have a, our training would be an absolute mess. 
if we get the C plus players in. And we're still waiting for all the scouting on the U20s. And so we have to be patient either way. So I will be, be overly aggressive and devalue our training just for the sake of getting more people in. For the sake of knowing, uh, or for, for knowing who we're going to go after earlier. As you're an American, I trust your opinion on burgers. Uh, the best burger that you can get from a fast food joint, at least in the United States, I think is uh, Five Guys, but it also costs your firstborn child to get a burger at Five Guys. And so you really got to take that with a grain of salt. I never was a big Burger King person, right? But I don't think that's as prominent in foreign lands. Now, I will say as somebody that has had McDonald's in, you know, England in particular, it's a little different. It's a little different. It is a little different. What's the situation? What players are you, how many players are you looking for? We're looking for a couple of right backs. Uh, we're likely looking for a center back. Bruno Piri looks like he might be on the move with his $0 release clause being triggered. But honestly, we got multiple years out of him. So it's fast, casual, not fast food. Five guys. Oh, well, um, man, I swear you can say anything on the internet and somebody's going to be like, you are wrong. You got the general idea. I'm talking like not a restaurant you sit down at regularly. But I understand that like five guys doesn't have a drive through. So probably definitionally it's not. It's not what you think, you know? It's not what you think. Do, 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 do. How much money is he getting? Because like, he wants fringe player, and that's great, but he's always wanted way too much money. Lucas. Uh, look, man, I, I, I need you to go a little lower here, Carlos. Carlos, I, I just want to see if we can get him. I would want to see if we win the contract negotiation over like a, a team like Hartberg. He might want to go play at a team like Hartberg instead. We'll see. We got our under 18 physio, Michaela Nul. Because we do have a few youth players down there, so we need somebody to take care of them. Michaela's going to bring the snack. You know, she's going to... Not only will she make sure they don't get hurt, she's going to... You know, they're all like 16. She'll bring the snacks, the orange slices. It's going to be great. They're going to have a rip-roaring good time down in the U18s. Five Guys opened its first Italian restaurant here in Milan. It's kind of meh. See, I don't know if I trust a Five Guys in, in, in Italy. No, look, Italy, you got the best food. Right, ever. The best food. Like, no doubt about it, just the best food. It's the best food I've ever had traveling is in Italy. But I don't trust the hamburgers, right? Let We have that. We've got that. You've got everything else. I had to preface that with be like, you know, I trust a lot of food in Italy. I don't I trust the hamburgers. I once saw a man playing Dancing Queen on the didgeridoo. I thought, wow, that's Aboriginal. Wow, exactly. <sighs> Dancing Queen by ABBA. It's on a didgeridoo too, so it's ABBA original. Oh, wow, Sam Wall is just terrible just wanted at everything. to say thanks for a crazy year. From the podcast on Skyrim to the ODFC drama, it helped me navigate a trash year. By the way, if you're using tips for lookups, can you try Mark Otilio? Lighting up the A-League, maybe a potential loan deal? Uh, yeah. Tilby, I got you. I think we have the other one that we got to get to first. My but... girlfriend yelled at me saying I never I'm listen to I a word she says. I thought, huh, that's a weird way to start a conversation. <laughs> I'm allergic to your jokes! 
Kelvin Shine was the other player requested. Thank you. 13 months of Z. Happy holidays, buddy. TJD. Let's go Dorfers. Up the Dorfers, too. Thank you for 13 months. And this is a really disappointing month of scouting, but I think what we've we've seen is that he's not a very good player, Nathan Dylan Saliba, so we're just gonna... And he's 19, too. I think we're just gonna let it go. He, he's a man of lacking particular burst. Not strong, not composed, not quick, not balanced, but also 17. There's some things that I like here about Kinu. And Jody Jones is the forward from... Toronto FC, decision-making between one and six, concentration between one and five. So he's not really paying attention, but... But he's also talented, right? He's not paying attention, but he's talented. So we balance the two. And we scout him. Rafael Dromena. Doesn't have the burst to take advantage of his pace. So I'm not going to make a move. As for the uh, the dad joke from Saucy Duck, I I don't I I don't I don't know. I don't. I'm assuming we're assuming the conversation started before she was yelling at you. Then, in which case, I'm going B minus. Big Merm, thank you for the ten. And uh, welcome back to the Hammers. That, that's, you already got a child. You're still going. The Aboriginal. Uh, I'm going A minus. I like that dad joke. I hate falling behind on the dad jokes, by the way. My apologies. But that, that was an A minus. That, that felt good. So we had to look up on Kelvin. John, we'll get after we do this scouting. We've got Javier Greco's contract runs out at the end of next year. Selfish. This team works 11 to 14. What do you mean he's selfish? It's just improper scouting. I'm just not going to do it anyways. Patty O'Donnell. Well, he knows how to make a crunching tackle, so that he's got that going for him. Juan Romagnoli. This is into contracts. January, fun stuff. Dalibor. Velimirovic. Velimirovic. What do you call a can opener that can't open anything? A can't opener. Swak, thank you so much for the prime. Welcome to the Hammers and uh, Big Maguire. I'll give you this. It definitely sounded like a dad said it. Except for the fact that the TTS said can opener instead of can opener. That that left me a little confused. Questioning my, my myself, my sanity. Wasn't quite sure what was going on there. Let's have a look at Kelvin John. Okay, Kelvin John, good striker for you. Tanzanian, 20 years old. I feel like I've seen this guy before. We'll throw a weak scout on him. He's playing for KRC Gank, but I don't know if he's actually playing. Seven appearances last year with a goal and an assist. Maybe the type of player we can loan in at some point. He looks promising, I mean, with what we've seen. What does a Japanese chef say when he sneezes? Wagyu. Hey, we beat Dinamo Zagreb, and we deserved it. Jordan Graham with the 86th minute winner. B plus on the Wagyu joke. Ah, oh, no worries. Just our 17 year old wonder kid. who was breaking his way into the first team and improving like an absolute madman. Yeah, no worries at all. Just, just, just shattered his foot in the preseason. Three to four months for David Dietz. Goodness me. Who's the other striker? Lucas Pierre, the 15-year-old. Guess what, man? Your time to shine. All right? Your time to shine. Training cramp registration. I already brought Lucas Pierre, so... Lucas, 
You are up. You're going to play against Bournemouth, you 15-year-old menace, because our 17-year-old David Dietz is out. Shabba Whippy with the five <laughs> giftings. Rodrigo, Crawl, Dorian, Injectia, Rizyak. Welcome to the Hammers. Shabba Whippy. Thanks for making five people's days. Wow. Five gifted subs. A first five gifted for Shabba Whippy. Thank you. And enjoy the, the ticket into the Hammers. So the next player that we were set to look up is Marco Tilio. He was one. Not hard to tell there, but he's a Melbourne City attacking midfielder. We know nothing about him. The Emperor asked Darth Vader what he thought Luke might have got him for he's Christmas. He's playing well. Darth Vader replied, I already know. I have felt his presence. He absolutely broke into the first team with a broken foot. Huh? Huh? Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here all week. I will be here all week. I do appreciate it. Bagpuss, um, he felt his presence. It's tough. Hey, our assistant coach is here. Vladimir Vulkov is going to be able to take charge of these friendly matches now that we play Bournemouth in four days. Two blood cells met and fell in love, but it was all in vain. No! The Luke joke uh, is a B plus, but that, that... It's an A minus. It was all in vain. That is an A minus. Feel ye. You've done it. Is Zealand the worst? Yes, but with more words. I see. I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice the poll until you said, well, he's ignoring the poll. Then I was like, oh, what poll? Oh, never mind. Now I'm going to... I, uh, uh, whatever, man. I'm too tough for that. Recently got hospitalized due to a peekaboo accident. They put me in ICU. Touchpad coming in hot. Or no, that was uh, that was Fierce Pierce. Touchpad, you you had the comma joke, which I appreciate. Thank you for the three hundred bits. And Willie, thank you so much for the two months in the Twitch Prime. Now, what are we gonna do about you, Fierce Pierce, with that joke? What are we gonna do about you with that joke? Really? Your stream is not 360p friendly. It should be. It's not a choice that we made. Why am I? I'm opening Xbox Game Pass on accident. Part of being in the partner program is that you should be. It should be accessible to change this. Yeah, it is. When you're in the partner, like, the only reason to become a Twitch partner is because then you, everybody gets their own, like, it's tweakable. It is accessible. So you freak me out there for a second. I'm like, oh, do I need to sue somebody, okay? Do I, you know, we need to have a little conversation. Come on. Come at you. Gonna use 160p just to spite you. 4k stream win. I you can't push a uh, football manager that far. Alright, guys, we've lost Bruno Piri. So uh 
Now we really need to find a center back. Bruno Piri signed with Sturm Graz, which, I mean, it's removed a giant wage from our wage budget, but we would have preferred that it came from somewhere else. All right, Scout, I'm going to go ahead and trust you on this and just say Babakar Saw is not worth keeping an eye on, even though he's 16 years old. We've got room, and you know we have room for Akush Keshkish. Big, physical, Mr. Reliable, Akos Keshkish. Man, he's going to want some serious cash. Important player, you're okay with that? Uh, I can pay you a 367 and a relegation release clause of $0. We get relegated, you can leave. Uh, the shutout bonus, avoiding relegation bonus. Yeah, we'll put that in there. Team of the year bonus of 38 and a half. He probably won't get that. Give me a goal bonus of 1.9, which he has a chance to hunt on corners. Uh, he wants minimum fee release clause for clubs and continental competition, which I don't mind. I mean, that can bait people into making an offer. I think we're going to be able to get Akash Keshkish in. 27-year-old Hungarian center back, Akos Keshkish. That's the main center back that we'd been eyeing up, was Akos Keshkish. It's either him or Hendrik Hansen, but I think Keshkish is better. He's certainly a more balanced player than Hendrik Hansen. He's also a year older, and, you know, I would be lying if I said that didn't make a difference, right? Good deal, good deal. We've had the contract. We had the money available go out make a big signing and you guys you what do you think is that a good is that good this dude looks good he's very balanced big physical can use both feet i see the player look up we're just gonna make sure we're making the right decision first he's forty thousand more than bruno piri a year he looks scary that's the point that's what we want that's what we want. The ICU joke, by the way, is an A minus. I'm gonna I'm gonna retroactively award that an A minus. I liked it. It made me cringe so long I almost forgot about the joke. His name sounds like Moroccan food. It really does, actually. Weirdly. Fluffy, thanks for the host. I hope you had a good stream. Formation, you're looking to play this season a 442. Roughly a 4 4 a staggered 4 4 2, perhaps one advanced wing. We'll see. But a 4 4 2. Keshkish and Custodio play together on my local team. <laughs> Where? That's awesome. I didn't know that they, uh, you have former teammates, Akash Keshkish and Olivier Custodio. Oh, I guess they, they play it. They, they play in Switzerland at Lugano. they did he went Keshkish went to Russia for two years they got relegated uh, his first year from the top Russian league but we're here just slapping together pieces of a much bigger puzzle right and he is he's an important piece to that much bigger puzzle that's what we're slapping together Grant Hall Philip Schiegel Ziegel Michael Brandner Michelle Niemeyer, Paul Potts. Hmm. Marcus Pink, the 32 year old forward. I think we can very safely say this guy's not good enough. Anybody else that's like way too old to be down here? Jimmy the Enganch. He really isn't bad. I don't mind this guy at all. I, normally an Enganch that's old, he's somebody that is completely useless. That guy is not completely useless. I think Pink's the only guy. Julian Buchta. 22-year-old Austrian that can play at both fullback positions. Please tell me you want, like, no money. He wants no money. That is really alluring. We'll see how many right-back options we get, but Julian is definitely someone I could see myself signing. Interesting. I know, I, I was suspiciously close to Pol Pot. I got a little nervous. Juan David Caravali, but only one C in his first name. Weird, that's not the traditional spelling. 20 years old. Uh, I. You know what? Mm -hmm. 
Give me a second. I had to check something. I had to check. I have to check something. Something just went off in my brain. I'm just checking something. Do bin men get formal training? Or do they pick it up as they go along? I don't think he would be on my team anymore. We totally had a Katabali though, didn't we? I really liked this team. These guys were good. Renzo Inostroza would be a... I mean, these guys... Like, this team would dominate the league that I'm in right now. That wasn't the point. We, uh, I definitely had a guy with the la the surname Karabali. My kids said they wanted a cat for we have turkey, but okay. Yes! Oh my god, my brain! Andres Carabali! He was a striker for us for two years. He scored 15 goals for Gineros. Yeah, no relation, I'm sure. And the last name just set off like a tripwire in my head. Andres Felipe Carabali Arcines. Let us out of the uh let us out of the second division. The 7.12. And then we sold him to Peru when he'd outlived his usefulness. So we did have a Carabali. Alright. Great game and exit. Uh, so, different Katabali, right? Juan David Katabali. But this guy does look to have some pace. Certainly influential in the air. And most importantly, contract is running out. Which means we are going to go throw him on the end of contract list so that we can keep track of Juan David Katabali of Deportes de Lima. That's incredible. I just knew somewhere deep down that I'd had a Katabali on my team before, and there was only one time when I would have had a Karabali on my team, and it was when I was in Colombia. A man that for years led us. Lucas Pierre, you are the new... You're the new Wonder Boy. You're 15 years old. 
Caramel Haddock, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Murray, thank you for the Tier 1. Legolas, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. I appreciate it. Sorry, we didn't actually look at uh, how Juan David was doing. We just added him to the end of contract list and kind of continued. But Juan David Carabali, he's only made one appearance for Deportes de Lima. That's a little concerning. At 20 years old, you'd hope that he was around the first team for Deportes de Lima by now. Are you hunting for the highest level now? Well, you don't have the firepower to hunt at the highest level yet. Even, you know, the behind the scenes highest level. We don't have the firepower to hunt there either. Beckham Castro, man with the loaded name. So Pedro headed to Campeonato Nacional. That's the only team interested in you. We are much better than, camp than, than teams in the fourth Portuguese division. That's not where I want to be dancing. Have you ever coached an ethnic only club like Bilbao? No, I have, uh, I have not done that. But I like Fabian Schaff. We do get $300,000 if he signs that deal. Yeah, we didn't even get Shao Lucas. He'd already gotten an offer he couldn't turn down from Austria, Lustenau. Rejected our offer and Hartberg's to take it. $300,000 is $300,000. Even if we're going to lose our head of youth development, we might as well do it fashionably. Like, there's just no, there's just no world in which I actually, like, sign Sean Airy. Let's just drop him. It's fine. We'll be all right. Let's work our way through who we've got in our scouting report right now. Juan Cruz Guasone. He's 22. He's worth a couple of million dollars. And I don't really like him that much. Hussein Balic. Adama Koulibaly has uh, started to... Uh, well... Can't really dribble. He's got to be explosive athletically. He's also only 16. It's one of the Cameroonian youth guys. Well, we can cancel the scout on the Uzbek goalkeeper. Shurat Abdurakhmanov, the only Uzbek that we ended up even trying to figure out if they were good, and of course he ends up being horrible. Not an accurate representation of Uzbek you know, they're of Uzbek quality. Real rip. Real rip off. Started scouting Fort Wayne's Alex Montez. The unambitious 19 year old wing. Daniel Pedrozzo, the 19 year old center back. Hmm. That composure is really low, and it is a problem. Cancel the assignment, remove him from the shortlist. Pedrozo's not the guy at Boyakpon. We are aware of his end of contract greatness. Pascal Fisher's too slow for the position. Hey, got one. You win. Whoa! Odds he's actually that good. I'm going to go with pretty low, but that that is, you know, you see a full potential kind of five-star guy coming through. Oh, well, there's Say Pedro. He's got the bid. We might as well offer him a trial, see if he wants to try and prove himself at a higher level than the Portuguese fourth division. I don't know. Link to the region face pack. It's right there, my dude. Ollie got gotcha. you. Just made it to the top division of Denmark after six years in the second tier. Had some financial issues. Love my loanies, but can't fill a first team with them now that I'm competing against the parent clubs. Any advice? Yeah, you got to find the... Uh, you you got to find those abroad parent clubs now. In Denmark, the Premier League and the Bundesliga should be within reach for good parent clubs. And you still can loan the players. You just don't have that... 
affiliate club status, so you're probably not going to get them for free as easily. Barcelona just put 63 million down for Tagliafico in the game. Do they automatically assign face... Well, well, yes, the regen face back assigns ethnically accurate AI generated faces to all of your regions. Yes. Do the Dorfers have any affiliates? No, we do not. We have tried to seek out a senior affiliate before. The board has told me that they could not find one. Well, not automatically. I mean, it does. You just have to make, you have to, you know, do a few things to make the app work. Provide it with the information. So Pedro did sign the contract. He is not an optimist. Brian Henning and uh, all those guys had already signed deals. Really glad we could be straightforward about it. Juan Pablo Sarate. Philip Wiesinger. His contract or like trial run out? I feel like he should have been on trial with us. Do we want to make a move for for Philip? Which one does he want? Oh, we can't offer him a contract. We've made a trial offer. Got to continue a minute. So it's just glitched. I'm not going to be able to withdraw my... Okay, cool. Cool. Not going to be able to withdraw my trial offer. Awesome. Love that. At this point, you know, every every time I don't win a match from this point on, it's your fault, football manager. I just hope you know that. I hope you know that. I hope you know that. I hope you internalize it. You know, I hope it makes you sleep better at night, knowing that you're responsible for every defeat I ever suffer in this game. Juan Camilo Roa. See you later. All right. I need to tweak this team. We've got Dietz, who's got a broken foot, who's out there. We're missing a couple of our center backs. Nick Venema is coming in, though, so that's cool. Venema and Paul Nolan's going to play. We get Paul Nolan out there. I mean, look at this. You know? Look at this. Panico, Dietz, Anderson, all... Less than ideal vibes. Slavija Radovic. <laughs> Homie. Bro! Homie. Bro! The fierce peers! With 20 gifted subs to the hammers. 20! Twenty gifted subs from the Fierce Pierce. Incredible act of kindness from Fierce Pierce. To throw 20 subs, 20 people that get the bacon, the emotes, they can get into the subsection of the Discord. Thank you, thank you. The fiercest of pierces for throwing down 20 gifted subs, a miraculous 250 gifted subs in the month of December. Beisinger took the Admir Vacker Modling offer. Sarate took that offer. Caleb Spear. All right. Yep. 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 20 gifted subs in this. Gary, how are we feeling? We're feeling pretty good. Thanks for asking. No, I'll give you a uh, I'll give you a zero dollar relegation release clause. My home slice zero. 
I'll work with, you know, we work with the team of the year bonuses and we work with goal bonuses on our center backs. Lucas, we've got a friendly relationship, Lucas. And so I, I trust that we're going to be able to get this down to 146,000. Thank you very much. And uh, we got the offer on the table. It's time to move. Peter knows it all. He's made his concerns public. He wants to leave Frigg. Well, I don't want him, unfortunately, for him. Oh, a Shawringer! Wow! With 10 more. 10 more gifted subs, bacon emotes in the chat. Poor favor. Because the Shargers followed up Fierce Pierce's massive 20 with 10 more gifteds. Catch a sub, catch some bacon. Do, 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 do. Uh, Vittorio Bianco. This actually looks like a New Zealand kid that might, uh, might be competent. He's got no transfer interest at the moment. Oh, hello, Warren Shimbembe. Vicente's scouting duties, he's found Warren Shimbembe, who is a... Well, he plays for Mets, dude. He's playing... Uh, well, I guess they got relegated. Did, when did they get relegated? Oh, last year. Okay. So he's dominating the lead. Uh, Warren Shimbembe. I mean, that, that, there's just no way this guy isn't good, right? Like, he's just a beast. I, hmm, I'm going to go fully scout, but we're going to put it at the top of the list. Now, well, arena. Same, literally both of you guys fully scout top of the list. Fran, get in here. Uh, Saul, Salas. Okay. And there we go. Uh, Bournemouth ease to victory three to one. You know what? We played hard. We competed. Venema scored and they scored their third in the 94th minute. So far as I'm concerned, we only lost two to one. Chris, can I get hurt or something? What, what's going on? Oh, he wasn't included in the training camp squad. That's right, because we were trying to move him. Stirring lack of... Oh, no, there is some interest. Trags Kurikin wants uh, Prisa Kenne. Well, it's time for you to come in with an offer, please. Fierce Pierce, thank you for the gifted to Rohan. That's 21 gifteds for Fierce Pierce. Atlanta Hawks, I appreciate the 13 months, by the way. The Baker's dozen. Thank you for that. I hope you're enjoying the gold and Falauka. Thank you for the six. Enjoy your silver. It's very shiny. I'm just saying Paul Nolan can't play. He can't play defensive midfield. Well, we're going to have to fix that. That's an oversight on my part. Stupid assumption, uh, but defensive midfield, ball-winning midfielder on support. That is where Paul Nolan's going to have to learn to play. Because, my goodness, he should be able to play there. With his skill set, that's where he was born to play. All right, Niels Bootsen, we've got his attributes, and i got to be perfectly honest, this guy is nowhere near what my coaching staff seems to think that he is. Akash Kashkish. I mean, what are you waiting for? Another contract offer from somewhere else? Yo, Sid! <laughs> With five gifteds. Boardface, Rodney, Tommy, Giggs, Reader, you're in the hammers. Boom, bacon. Chap, yes. Wow. Fierce Pierce with 21. A Sheriger with 10. Sid with five. Thank you for the gifted, Sid. Your first five to the hammers. Age rear. Thank you for the six months in advance. I mean, do that. that Clearly, the fans are happy with our transfer policy. We didn't sell. We 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 didn't sell the black man. We ended up losing Bruno Piri, freeing up the wage budget uh, because of that zero dollar release clause he was working with. But you know what? We live in a society. We have a team. Uh, Warren Shimbembe's already got offers in for him, which means we've got to join the party or else we're never going to get Warren Shimbembe. 
Uh, in order to get an offer accepted, I'm assuming we have to put that amount of money in. Uh, I'm not going to do installments. Uh, I'm not going to do after international appearances. I'll do after 50 appearances. I'll pay you uh, $50,000, and I will pay you forty-five dollars upfront for the right to talk to Warren Shimbembe, and you're okay with that. And let's talk to Warren Shimbembe. We're going to learn as much as we can about Shimbembe and Nahuel Arena, but ain't easy. Being cheesy. He is more interested in Claremont Foot, uh, guys in tap, and more interested in Siska Sophia, which means that we are very unlikely to get this deal done. He wants to be a Metsala. I believe we can do that. Little bit too much money. Now, everything else, weirdly enough, was in. What did the pirate say on his 80th birthday? I'm 80. We feel about 364 we don't we don't feel good about that disappointing start to the negotiations locked in 575 what are we, just 500,000 with a 25 percent sell on yeah i don't think that's the contract he's gonna choose but the fact that he even is willing to consider that contract is baffling to me okay all right earlier i got the fries that will make you cry the shakes that will make you quake the burgers that will i just got burgers You just grab Fran Velez to a 32-year-old Spaniard on essentially a one-year loan to play center back. We'll see if he ends up being good. Bit of a composure gap, which is weird for an old player. We got another burger. Benjamin Rosenberger should have some should have some pace to him. Can play left back as well. Makes him interesting. Fascinating development. We're headed to our tour. We're now officially on tour for the first time. We are in Spain. Woo! It's like the Beatles, baby. No! No, dude, I wanted no, I don't no, know. That's way too much money. I liked you because you wanted 35 to 50,000. That's why I liked you. Love how that doesn't work. It's just so so simple how this sort doesn't work, so I can't just see the people that I I've ticked not to go. Who approved a system where this was even possible? Avi Vasquez out for five weeks. He might as well just stay, get his rehab. We'll be back to see you soon. Prisa Kene might as well go because there, I, I can see a world in which he is on the team going into next season. And we bring our entire youth team as well for a little tour of Spain. All right, Caleb, how much money was I offering you?
you kidding me? Because the other contract offers that we've put out, we don't have the uh, financial firepower to elevate his offer. I will, I will literally cancel another one of the transfers that we're negotiating right now, I swear. KZ, have you seen conjunctivitis.com? It is a site for sore eyes. No, there's no asking price. The debate that's going on is not whether we sign him or not. We want him. The problem is Wickham Wonders have come in from League One and they probably put a contract in front of him. It's worth 200,000. Now I can't seem to find a way to figure out which offer he prefers more, which is annoying. I can't see, like, I, I talked to the agent uh, in the contract negotiation screen. Uh, we're already past the point where we would see it. 
I talked to Lucas's agent. He said uh, he's he's got offers in from other teams. So we're just trying to decide whether it's worth it to cancel one of our other potential transfers so that we can free up wage in the short term to go and make him an offer for more money so that we can make sure that we get him in. We, we want him. We just haven't made that offer yet. We're uh, the the issue is, and then there's there's layers to this. Akos Keshkesh is a guy that we want in. He is a rock solid, strong, dominant, balanced center back uh, with international pedigree that's played in multiple top European leagues already. We want him and Caleb Spear, and then we'll feel really comfortable about where our center back position is because we also have Marchetta and Puchiger on the roster already, uh, and Bumberger. So I mean, we would have. You know, we've got five guys that would fit in and around the team. We have four guys that we're comfortable putting on the field. Marchetta included. Puchiger's the deep cover option that has played for us a lot before. You're in a better league? I know. That's why I don't, it all depends on his personality, which is fickle, but he's ambitious. I don't know whether that means more money or better league. In this case. Mother clucker. Tartar sauce. I said clucker. God. Have you never heard G rated swear words before? Dag gummit. Gosh darn tootin', it's offensive to chickens. All right, calm down. Chickens don't have feelings. I actually did say mother clucker. Cluck. <sighs> For anybody concerned. Spilled my water. Fortunately, it bounced right off the table and it has a lid on it. So it just leaked a little bit. Caleb, we've already got an American on the team that would help with your adaptability issues. He's playing FIFA with Dietz, who's got the broken foot, and all he can do is play FIFA. I just want to up the offer to like 200,000. Is that too much to ask, really? We're looking to bring in Ortiz, who's another American. We're looking to bring in Vanderhorst, who's another American. See, we know there are three teams with offers in on Shimbembe that he prefers more. Actually, he does like Cheska Sophia. Gwen Gobbs probably doing the business. I mean, next three, well, they don't have an offering. So, Gwen Gom, what are they, League Dua? Grenoble Foot.
There's a weirdly decent chance that we could end up getting Warren Shimbembe as well. In which case, we've got three midfielders that we like. Like, actively like as difference-making players. It's out of oxygen, dude. It's out of oxygen! I have just been hospitalized due to an peekaboo accident. They put me in, in the, the ICU. ICU. Yeah, uh, we actually heard that one earlier today, Dutchie. I didn't mean to read over it. Very unfortunately official Dutch. I love you, but we had heard it before. Bold Lemon, thank you for the Twitch Prime. And uh, welcome to the Hammers. Sorry, what do you think we should do, chat? Let me put a, put a few options before you. We cancel Ian Ortiz and we offer Spear more money. We cancel Shimbembe and we offer Spear more money. We stay as is. Or we cancel the other center back and offer Spear more money. What do we do? Stay strong, baby. We're staying strong. That we're doing with your help. Only redeeming factor is that he's American is the, and that his potential is stratospheric. I believe you, Dutchie. I have the faith. English work permit? Honestly, you're right. I don't think Spears is going to get a work permit. With that, we continue. There's no reason he would get a work permit unless they offer him the money half, uh, you know, top part of the team. Uh, his asking price of 30,000 is too high. Um, can we try to negotiate a fair price? 22,000 is fine. Okay, you wanted, you wanted to drop it $8,000. That's perfectly okay. You want to drop your, your, your freaking asking price 8,000, so we'll, we'll stay. We'll hold. We have one more delay available on our, uh, Ortiz transfer, so we're going to use it. And uh, we're going to reprioritize his scouting. I think we prioritized it a while ago, but it has slipped. We didn't. Where's Ortiz? Hey, Owen! 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 That's the guy we really want. Oh, we're on pins and needles, chat. We're on pins and needles. So I made a graph of all my past relationships. It has an x-axis and a y-axis. Dutchie, I love you. You know this. We've talked about it. And that's a great dad joke. I've used it in real life since I heard it on this stream before. But Dutchie, you know, you did come back with a former A. You came back with a former A. Yes, we're going to do the lookup. Akos Kashkish is in. Super balanced, physically accomplished, technically proficient in the first touch and passing, you know, and defensively. It's just, there is no hole in Akos Kashkis game. Even as a decent weak foot. Like, this guy is just rock solid. Rock solid. What do we go by God's power tower? Where is he? 
Where is God's power tower? He should be somewhere. Oh, there's a bid. No, somebody's going for God's power. Not God's power tower. Anybody but God's power tower. Somebody's coming in with a bid. Shingia Taro Viste, a Romanian team, is coming in with a bid for God's Power Tower. Extrema Dura from La Liga is interested. Oh, it's tough. God's Power Tower is in the east. Oh. We were hoping we'd have time to complete our scouting report. We're filing it away right now, but there's an offer down for God's Power Tower. He wants important player. Uh, boss, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. <sighs> Got it. Uh, he has an unfriendly relationship with me. Good. Um, that's going to help. His agent doesn't like me. So his contract's going to be absurd. Agent's not liking you really is... A really it's a significant problem <sighs> we got a contract down that is acceptable we can now see if we're going to win over god's power tower we can't we simply cannot lose god's power tower I don't know why the agent doesn't like me, so I'm falling out over a player. Could have been years ago. Uh, we signed center back Akos Keshkesh to replace Bruno Piri. Boom. Very happy. Yes, I am too. I would like to work on some quickness. He is not exactly the most fleet of foot character. He's not slow. He's not a fleet of foot guy. Uh, add him to the training camp squad. Welcome to the team, Marchetta. Dude, Marchetta, you didn't play anyways. Right, you were you were a hot prospect developing towards the first team. I want you to earn that playing time. I'm a professional, so I'll leave it there. All right, uh, Marchetta's a little downcast. Do we have anybody interested in you? No, you're just uh, unhappy. Cool, you just sit there and be unhappy then. That is perfectly fine. Michael Brantner's upset he was left out of the training camp squad. Dude, you are on trial with us right now. Who do you think you are? Why are you even in my dynamics? You're on trial. Well, Bumberger on the left, Akos Keshkish on the right. That's our defense right now. Number one in Jersey sales for God's Power Tower. That could make it worth it. idea what we're going to do with Ian Ortiz either. I have a feeling we're not going to finish his scouting report in time. So we're going to have to we're going to have to kind of wing it on that right back American Ian Ortiz. A lot of people want Steven Shemandle, don't they? Okay. 
press conference. Yeah, we're with Akash Keshkes. Certainly confident. Uh, I'm not going to reveal my future plans. No concerns. Universal language, all that jazz. Uh, Keshkes leaves the press conference very happy. We are happy about that. It's time to do that. Look up Kun Temenushkov. Striker at Claremont Foot, the Bulgarian. It's like, I think I had heard of this guy before. Looks a pretty decent player. Is uh, available on loan. Prompts us to a one-week scouting. He's been... Well, from Leeds, loaned to Spain, where he barely played, loaned to Real Union, where he barely played, and then played some more the next year, then sold to Clermont Foot, where he made two appearances, and now is going to try and become a relevant part of the team, which he has not been thus far in his career at 23 years old. Has not broken into the Bulgarian national team yet either, which I imagine would be the target for our lad. Uh, you said... The amazing Bulgarian striker, he helped me reach the first league in Portugal. Maybe he can help you. Possible. How do youth development's gone for 300,000 to Lask, which means we are looking for a new one. We'll take your generous donation of $300,000 and we will sign an even better head of youth development. Spirited. Frank has a party. Hello, Mr. Zealand. Haven't been here in about a month. Hope the save is going well and that you have a safe and happy holiday. Thanks. You too, dude. I appreciate the three months, Cody. Any relation to Dave? Slightly. But we need a guy and, you know... French and all continental pro license. Spirited lad. Good feel for everything we need him to do. Problem with this guy is doesn't have a great personality, but he actually is continental pro with a reputation that's not awful. Senior Patral. He paid 8000 a year to be the river head of youth development in Brazil. Are we in Europe yet? No, we lost in the European playoff by a point. It was brutal. It hurt. Odd Ed's both. Thank you for the 500 bits, my dude. Ed Carwin, I appreciate the two. Wanting to start a new save, but you don't have any ideas. I hope the save's going well and that you have a... Uh, Oh, wait. Oops. I'm looking for an obscure team in Europe. All I'm going to tell you is on the 26th of December, we're going to be dropping a video that is going to be insanely helpful for that. Why does personality matter in a non-player role? Because heads of youth development will recruit players uh, more like their personality. Spirited's the best personality on this list, which is why we put an offer in for Frank as a party. Uh, but we also, you got Marek Orespecki, who is, you know, he's got fun, 
Continental Pro license, knowledge of the areas. And uh, works with the youngsters well, judges, you know, judges things well. Matsinho Petral, though, has got that judging player potential. I think we're going to try and get Matsinho Petral. He's also going to be cheaper. We literally have to pay him 41 and a half so he can get a work permit to be our head of youth development. And we'll uh, withdraw our contract offer to Frank as a party. Because he's actually not anywhere close to the level that Matsinho Petrao is at when it comes to being able to evaluate talent, uh, the potential ability of talent. He also has a great feel for Brazil, which, you know, you'd love to get a couple of Brazilian kids through. How do you deal with a team that struggles to score goals? Well, I ascribe to the find a way to put more forwards on the field. All right, we finished scouting Chief Deju. That's our one week. He's on a non-contract. Has no transfer interest. So that means we've got time to just work on a full scouting report because he's not going to go anywhere. He doesn't have any transfer interest to go anywhere. He wants to stay in Cameroon. He's only 17. He can't leave yet. Even if he wanted to sign a pre-contract somewhere, he couldn't actually go until he turns 18. So what's the point? Tom Smith, we've started scouting. I, I I liked Tom Smith the first time we saw him. Seemed a balanced fullback. Matez Jusa. Worth an immediate scout for show. Faux show. Pabwe Cassiani, that's annoying. He's putting the deal in on him. It's Independiente Medellin, so at least he's staying in Colombia. Just in case he ends up being good, at least he's staying in Colombia. Dave, 22 <laughs> months, Dave. My goodness. Colm, I appreciate the tier one. Welcome to the Hammers, but Dave, 22. We're getting old, Dave. We're getting old. Andy Kawaya. He does look so fun to manage, doesn't he? Time flies like an arrow. Fruit flies like a banana. Still on pins and needles for other transfer deals. Uh, okay, this guy's done a deal. Uh, guy's not even on my short list. Oh, we must have offered him a trial. You had fruit flies, like, pssst. You know, fruit flies, they like a banana. McKinstry's got his SVU did move, which means we just lost a scout. Oh, Shimpembe. Signed with Seska Sophia. Wow. Okay, chasing the bag. Uh, we have time to work on a full scouting report for Abu Jing because he, like his friend, very unlikely to want to move Abu Jing from Generation Foot in Cameroon. So we can check to see if he's good or not. Tommaso Panico, and, all right, fitness tests. Good opportunity to get us into some general rehab from our nasty injuries that we've suffered. But since Shimpembe is off the docket, that means that we are back in business. Caleb. Hi. I just wanted you to know I'm offering uh, 192 now. Free of charge. Just upping it by 50. 192 is the offer, Caleb. Just thought I'd float that out there. The 192 is the offer. All you. All you. And, you know, let me know if you need anything. All you. 
Raphael AI is a little tired. Just rotate a couple folks. Chris Akene gets to keep playing in spite, you know, despite my better judgment. Anybody else that can get out on the field right now that's part of our team? Not exactly. Hovanissian, sure. How'd we do on our, our Spanish tour? How are you setting up your assignments? See, mine uh, don't seem to find much in this year's game. I'm very localized right now. I'm not exactly in the full swing of wiring the world. And by not exactly, I mean not at all. We're very much going on the field to try and... Oh. Albanes scored the equalizer, but Vuksevic put Levant ahead. That's all right. We're having good fun on tour in Spain. Getting guys matches. That's what's important. Next network game day will be after Christmas. The Thursday after Christmas will be the next network game. So you got that to look forward to. Angel Calvo plays for Flint City. Doesn't look good. We're just going to go ahead and let him go. But is this a discard list? I thought we'd already dumped these guys. But Brozzo. We decided he wasn't the bee's knees. Luis Segura. We hadn't made that decision about this guy. So, you know, into contract. This contract's coming up in six months. Might as well. All right. We really want Spear next. Liverpool just made a $151 million offer for Holland in the game. Fun. Southern, thank you for the two months. Have a look up for Ethan Laidlaw. Got it. Got an excellent smile. Give him that. Stoyanovic had his work permit rejected. Well, looks like you get to stay on trial with us, huh, Mr. Stoyanovic? Svarnas was on the maybes. We'll drop him. Adama Koulibaly. Uh, I'm rocking back a lot on this stream. No. Don't like it. Sergio Castell, I like it. Take a one week, please. Andy Kawa in advance talks to another club, although he can also... Uh, right. We told you we liked Andy Kawa, but we can't we can't feasibly put that contract down right now. We just can't. Now with the limited knowledge that we have. Oh my god, it's mixed disc rude. Where has he been, man? I haven't heard the name mixed disc rude in a long time. Have you guys seen the video of the guy selling the Polisic shirt to the pawn shop? Yes. Horrifying. I have, Tyke. If you haven't, it's on Twitter. It is horrifying. I've never heard two guys that know less about soccer talk about it. 
is on Pawn Stars. Which I didn't know was still on. We have Goetzberg, Ulsan, Hyundai. He did two loans in Korea. Came back to Man City and then loaned out to Sweden again. And then left Man City for Denizlespor. Den and then played in the Super League decently. And then Cy a team in Cyprus brought him in. And now he's under contract in Cyprus. This contract is going to run out at the end of next year. I mean, goodness me. 38 caps for the United States, though. Mixed Discarude. Living that life. Oh, what a player. Unbelievable. I mean, I thought he I thought he disappeared. I never was going to think about him again. And here he is. He's reappeared. It's amazing. He made 830,000 a year, old Mike. No wonder he doesn't want to leave that contract. He's making more than, he's making twice as much as anybody else that's on my team right now. That is a whack amount of money. For a guy of that quality, absolutely whack. 830,000 a year. No. Yeah, he's just basically like the LeBron James of soccer and you're just like, nope. And wait until they get to the what position does he play? And then it just gets so much, it, it's so much worse. We'll do the look up, Ethan. He's uh, moved on loan to the lower divisions of the United States for some ungodly reason, but his contract is still strong. So he's on loan to the lower divisions of the U.S. Uh, he has not broken into the Hibs first team, obviously, but he did have an assist in his first game with Char the Charleston Battery in South Carolina. So living a very interesting life, Mr. Ethan Laidlaw. I saw a man chatting up a cheetah in a nightclub. He was trying to pull a fast one. Goodness. Hey, Southern, thank you for the two. Tyke, I appreciated the uh, the 13. And thanks for sending us down that road. It's such a horrifying road. Mitzel, I'm going B plus in the, the, the fruit flies joke. Trying to pull a fast one's an A minus. Chad is divided. He's trying to pull a fast one. It, it, it was a slow burn, but I gave it an A minus. I like I enjoyed the the process of that slow burn. I mean, they clearly don't like him that much, but he is an explosive finisher. Come on, Spear! Come on, Spear! Come on, Spear! We just want to see Spear. We just want to see Spear pop up. That's all we want to see. We just want to see Spear pop up. You guys good. Aldair Hernandez is an end of contract. All right. Spear. Spear! Announce Spear. Why is there no relegation in the MLS? Because that's the way they built up the league. 
I mean, they did a really good job of building the MLS into something great. I mean, the MLS is a great league. The stadiums are packed, plenty of passion, talented young players. From Talis Magno to Ezekiel Barco to the whole host of players like Ricardo Pepe that are breaking into the U.S. national team and showing their quality. They did it the right way, but they did it through a franchise model to build the, the league up. Pablo Soda. Sometimes you just can't make it up, can you? He's got a contract offer, probably going to take that. Patrao has accepted our offer as head of youth development, but he is going to have to wait. Uh, we're going to have to check on our player registration. And uh, we're going to have to register a few guys. But we do have a lot of open spots for registration because we're us. Ajic, Dennis Werner, Detlef Geiger, uh, Mladen Bubainia. Yeah, you know, might as well just register everybody. Even Stefan Beyerlein, the awful backup goalkeeper. Why do we have to decide right now? Why was that like the thing that we needed to do? Well, I'm glad that Anthony Schmitz damaged his foot. I'm glad that our preseason, despite not being a super intensive preseason schedule, is completely overwhelming people. Julian Navas, I feel like we're literally, we're not already, we're scouting somebody that looks and has a similar name to you and is also from Argentina and plays right back. Just thought we'd spice it up, make it pretty confusing. Glad you could help. Hmm, Nicholas Kristoff, no. Uh, Metodi Stefanov, no. Just delaying the signing of Spear. Iterino! Fuck, what's up? Now, the argument was that the, if you want to grow the league, there's too much risk to investors in starting a team. Uh, where that team could get relegated. So the way they encouraged investment in the league is like your team's not going to get relegated. You are you are in the MLS. You are in the top flight. And you're going to stay in the top flight. Okay. And there's a lot of parity and competition within the top flight. Because the different salary rules, they also didn't want it to become so obvious like a china right so you have two or you have you have three players that are exempt from the salary cap and everybody else must adhere to the salary cap rules which is just the way they've done it for you know since the beginning of the mls it, it was all the entire setup of the mls was predicated on growing the game growing the investment in the game and it worked I don't think it beats Europe's top eight leagues. I think that the MLS is probably similar. So top seven is clear. That includes the, you know, Ajax, Netherlands vibe. Um, I think that the MLS could slot in somewhere around there though. I mean, you see the players that leave the MLS in transition. Um, Brendan Aronson left the MLS and immediately became a crucial part of Salzburg. The MLS players that leave the MLS and then go contribute, uh, you know, significantly. Do you think the MLS... No, the MLS is never going to be the biggest league in the world. I, I, I think a lot of things would need to change for the MLS to be the biggest league in the world. Uh, it's unfair. Let's say there's a team in the championship and they want to play in the MLS. They've got the money and the quality and they're winning the second tier. Is it unfair that they don't get a chance to play at the top tier? 
the way that united like the way that sports in the united states works we don't look at that as like oh it's unfair they should be playing like what a, you know they, yeah daryl dk's transition to barnsley in the championship he lit it up you know he, he was playing better at barnsley than he has for orlando city um how does mls rank in the global league ranking i don't know I think most Bulgarian teams have beat MLS ones. I don't I don't think that's true. I honest to goodness do not think that's true. I think if you took the M I mean, it's impossible to compare because, you know, the travel alone would disorient the teams. You could never have a completely fair matchup between the teams. So when you look at like anything that you use to judge quality of a team from transfer mark values uh, to impact upon transitioning into major European leagues, I think the the um, I, I think MLS is better than the Bulgarian league. I, I think it's clear. I mean, if you, you know, the, the quality I mean, the guy on uh, Newcastle, the Paraguayan guy, he came from MLS too. I mean, MLS produced and developed players are in more places than you expect. No action. Thank you so much for the four months, my dude. I don't know if it's a top 10 league in the world. I do think that after you get through the first seven European leagues that you can comfortably slot MLS in there at at least the same level as your Austria, your Russia, your uh, your Turkey. The Almiron, thank you. I'm just saying these guys pop up and plays like Alfonso Davies. Okay. Alfonso Davies was produced and molded in the MLS and then moved to Bayern that obviously continued to mold him into a wonderful left back instead of the attacking wing that he was in the MLS. I think Dinamo Zagreb, Hajduk, Re okay, no. Dinamo Zagreb would beat most MLS teams. I'm not giving you Osijek and Rijeka. Nope. That's one outlier amongst hundreds of players. It's not, though, is what I'm trying to say. Players that move from the MLS to Europe have had a positive, like a very positive impact, right? Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams, like the, these guys played in the MLS for years. And then people look, you know, they're playing at that standard and people go, okay, cool. And they step into these teams in, in Europe. And they, the, you know, Tyler Adams walks into the team and, Leipzig. Weston McKinney walks into the team at Schalke and then obviously moves to Juventus. Like, I mean, these guys are... There's a lot of stigma, too. I mean, who really knows the truth? There's a lot of stigma. Like, there is. It's weird. There's two, there's two sides to this. The vast majority of chat's not American, right? According to analytics, it's about 10% of you guys that are American. I'm obvious, like, I'm obvious. So if I can speak, like, from the American perspective of, like, what I experience always being an American, always watching the MLS, rooting for the U.S. national team, whatever. There are two types of people that are not from the United States and the way they look at the U.S. game. One, we're all bad and we're posers. And two, we're coming. And it's somewhere in the middle. Right? Like, there are the people that are very excited. They're like, oh, look at the U.S. They're producing all these players. This is so interesting. Ah, you know, the MLS is the top 10 league in the world. And I'm like, okay. Chill. And then on the other side, it's, oh, they suck. Like, why, why, why are they pretending that they're 
Good. Why are they pretending to care? They watched the clip of the Pawn Stars and those two dudes talking about a Polisic jersey that have absolutely no idea what they're talking about to an embarrassing extent. And they go, oh, that's the entire United States. There are 350 million people in the United States. There are a lot of people that do not care about soccer. They don't pay attention to it. There are a lot of people that don't care about hockey. There are a lot of people that don't care about baseball. Basically, everybody in the United States cares about football and basketball, right? But there are also a lot of people that do care. And there's a lot of people that do understand it and pay attention and understand the teams and understand the players and watch the MLS. I mean, somebody's in that stadium for Atlanta United. 70,000 people in the stadium watching Atlanta United play. The absolutely raucous crowd at Portland that they all ate, like, it's Seattle. And if you just think about the number of people that that actually is. So in the most recent poll, we looked it up a year ago, uh, that, you know, okay, what is your favorite sport? 9% of people said soccer in the United States. 9%. The only three ahead of it, baseball was 12, and then basketball and football were in the 20s. I think football might have been 30. What's your favorite, uh, what, what's your favorite sport? 9% of the United, it's 30 million people that that's their favorite sport. And I might not have put soccer on that poll if it was given to me. I might have put basketball because I love basketball too. It, yeah, it beat ice hockey. See, that's the thing. Understanding the U.S. sporting culture, which obviously it's not your prerogative to do, but also understanding that the fact that we have a lot of other sports we care about doesn't mean that the United States isn't... I, come to New York. Went not COVID. Come to New York post-COVID. Wake up at 7 a.m. and go to the Arsenal bar to, to watch the... Ar that place is packed to the brim. I've got a friend that wakes up at 7 a.m. and goes to uh, for Arsenal. And there's one for all the clubs. I had somebody invite me to go to a bar to watch the old firm Derby. It's the Rangers bar in New York. So this elitism stuff and like, oh, well, the Americans, yeah, they don't understand. They don't understand fandom. They don't understand like. It's already here. Go watch Portland and Seattle play. That is a vicious environment. A lot of, lot of beards. New York is extremely diverse and full of people from all over the world, so that makes sense. The friend that goes to the Arsenal bar was born and raised in Arkansas. That's not the reason. He was born in Little Rock. Which you likely can't even find on a map. Which isn't your fault. I couldn't find it on a map. The U.S. is in. The U.S. is mentally in. The World Cup is a massive TV contract in the United States. And as uh, just a whole separate, interesting little tidbit, I'm on this rant right now, but this whole extra tidbit, people that go, well, American sports are so boring with all the stoppages. You know what Americans say when I, like people that don't know soccer, what do you do? Oh, I play a soccer video game for a living. Oh, dude, I just can't watch soccer. It's so boring. They never do anything. 
Boom. I hear the same thing going both ways. You know why you don't like a sport? Because you don't understand what's going on. Which is fine. I don't understand what's going on in cricket. So I don't really care about it. Then that's my fault. But the only reason you don't like a sport is because you don't understand what's going on. And that's totally okay. But don't blame the sport. <laughs> That's bull. I understand cricket and it's still terrible. See, you have somebody in the chat say the U.S. is the best prospect country in the world, and I'm English. See, it's that, that's too far in the other direction. No, I look at the U.S. is the same way I look at Croatia, right? Like, I hope that we can be like Croatia. Our, our domestic league is good, but not great, so that we can pull, like, a third of our national team from the domestic league, but I want our best players at the, the biggest clubs. You know, I want to be like Croatia. Right? I'm from Syracuse and I go to a suburban rural high school. We have a giant group of seniors that watch Saturday games together, play football manager and talk about the sport just within our school group of friends. Yes. I had a kid in my fraternity wear his Manchester United shirt and drive everybody crazy because he'd walk down to the living room of the fraternity house and turn the TV on full blast to watch United at 7 in the morning. He'd get drunk and he'd start singing, you know, United chants. It is prevalent. And the U.S. being good helps CONCACAF. Yeah, because con but good CONCACAF players have essentially two leagues and like a team Saprisa from Costa Rica that they can play for you either play in Liga MX or you play in MLS the Canadian Premier League is trying to get going which is a good idea for them but it's not necessarily like uh huge who are we gonna give number 22 <sighs> Nolan gets 14 uh Igor Pajic is a youth player we're not gonna we're not gonna cave to him Martin Radakovitz wants uh, number four. We're not going to give that to him. Paul Nolan getting 14. That was a good sign. Uh, Jao Oliveira is going to stay number 20 in my estimation. He was, again, the leading scorer from last season, and he will carry the badge of honor of our team. Uh, let's go number nine, Nick Venema. Uh, Akos Keshkish is going to be number three. And uh, Lucas Pierre is going to get Wonder Kid number 19. All right. Kareem Conte, 16. Prisa Kene, 40, because he's not likely going to be here. And those are our numbers. Onward and upward. Olympian Honduras. I mean, uh, yeah, Honduras. I, I, I've actually, I have heard of them. I've signed players from them. Yeah. Mark, thank you so much for the prime, dude. I appreciate it. The sporting av uh, facilities available to aspiring players of any sport. I would say the issue with the main issue with soccer in the United States, the number, the number one, it's not interest. It's not interest. Champions League matches are broadcast on the main CBS channel. You get that even if you don't have cable. You get that if you have an antenna and you're sitting in Nebraska. It's the fact that the sport is only available at a high level to middle class and up kids and immigrants. The disparity of interest in the sport is that in the United States, it is inverted from the way it is in the rest of the world. The upper classes in the United States 
are the ones that are driving the sport and interested in the sport and play the sport. The lower classes don't. One hundred percent. That is the problem. You, it, 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 travel ball is expensive. If you want to play travel ball, it's expensive. And so it, it is inverted. Well, you say, oh, capitalism. Now, it's really that the club system is different in the u.s so like the nearest the closest club to where i grew up which was in tampa a major city in the united states more than an hour away on a highway in the car like the the closest senior club with a senior team of professional players more than an hour away on a highway in the car and i lived in a major city which like so you don't when, if you are 16 and you're playing travel ball in england your club is likely attached and you're any good at all your club is attached to a senior club that is able to finance travel that is able to finance matches kits practice coaches whatever And so the club that I played for only went up to U18. The only money it brought in was from the parents. It got some sponsorship money for the, you know, the ads and the sides of the fields and whatever. But the club that I played for growing up went up to U18 and then it stopped and then everybody went to school. I mean, it's not rough. That's just like, that's just the way it is. A lot of clubs in the United States, the vast majority, you, you'll go to a tournament, every single club there except for one. They'll be like Orlando City's youth team will be there. And then the other 25 teams there go up to U18. And everybody is paying to be there. And then U18 is it. You either go to college or you're a pro. That's it. That's it. And you know what? My high school team was number six in the country. And that's not like a brag. I was the backup goalkeeper. One player from that team is playing professionally right now. We were the number six high school team in the country. We had the warm ups. We beat everybody. And one player ended up playing professionally from that team. The majority of that roster, the last time they ever kicked a ball in an organized league was on that high school field. They didn't even play in college. See if he's in the game. He, he is in the game sometimes. Yeah, he's moving around the US. This was the kid on, uh, Derek was on my team. He actually, I think he just had a kid. He, uh, he started the Jacksonville Armada uh, out of high school. He went and played for the Jacksonville Armada after we graduated, which uh, in ASL, he's bounced around the lower leagues in the United States. Also, this is a lie. This is the fastest kid I've ever seen. Been a lot around, I've been a lot around, I ran track. I've been around a lot of fast kids. Derek Gebhardt's the fastest kid I've ever seen. I don't know if he still is, right? I haven't seen him. I haven't seen Derek in, since then, but still.
Do you think it's a culture thing? Yeah. You know what's interesting to me is that even though we were sixth in the country, nobody on our team was talking about being a professional soccer player. We were just having fun. And then, you know, one of my, um, let, let me think of, let me think of the team. One of the center backs went to Florida State and just went to college, graduated. I think he's in real estate now. Uh, the other one, I think, went to North Florida, not to play, just to go. Uh, those were, where, that's where my two center backs went. Uh, the right back, I don't even know where David is. I have no idea. I think he went to, I, I think he went to Florida. Not, not to play. Our striker went to U Tampa to, and then like just join the team there. Our wing went to fireman school. Our left back went to, he played at North Florida and then just called it. But you're just, there's no scouting. There's no like, there's nothing going on. I, I I think a ton of American players slipped through the cracks because of that. Because those kids were good. I watch a ton of soccer and I remember being like, those kids were very, some of those guys were very good. How do you develop player partnerships? I just have them play well uh, together. If, you, if you're winning, player partnerships will come. I need to browse immediately. Thank you. That, that's my personal experience with the US like scouting and development. And I think it's incredibly poor. The fact that like, and I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the guys that were playing while we were the sixth team in the country, right? I actually did play, but I did once let in a goal because I lost it in the sun. And they had a rule with me where I couldn't bounce the ball on the ground. I couldn't put it on the ground. I couldn't throw it. I had to punt it because I used to be a kicker for American football. You know, you grab the punt. And so those were the Zealand rules because they were so afraid I was going to turn the ball over. I'm not making this up. That's, a, that's, that's completely real. I had Zealand rules because they were so afraid I was going to give the ball away. You ever play St. Benedict's or Pennington? No, but we did play, um, oh, what's that? The, the ridiculous team from Florida, the prep school. It's just a bunch of foreign kids from Central America and like Brazil. That, it starts with an M. It's not IMG. We played them too. It's Montverde, Montverde Academy. That's it. We play, I remember, I played Montverde. I didn't play against IMG. I played Montverde. Yeah, I got to take my own goal kicks. I could crush a ball back in the day, but no, I wasn't allowed to put the ball on the ground. Yeah, Mont, we, 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 Montverde. And I was just like, this is not fair. These guys should be somewhere. Yeah, Daredevil, I've, I, Scotland's just, I mean, I've, oftentimes, oftentimes, soccer does a very good job of reflecting the culture in which it's taking place. And so cultural issues in Scotland then play their, you know, make their way into the development of the game. I was a no nonsense. Yeah, Big Sam managed the team. No, it was pretty funny. You guys know the story? Because I wasn't a soccer player. It was very fortuitous. I the, we've, we've had this big, long conversation about culture. While we're evaluating these players, we can just get into the story. Uh, I was a basketball player. I always loved basketball. It was such a solitary sport. I'm kind of a loner and not like a sad way. I just like being alone. I'll, you know, I need my couple of hours being alone every day. And so basketball is great. We had a hoop in the driveway. I'd just shoot every day, uh, you know, every day. And so I, I was really tall when I was young. I've been the same height since um, since I was 13. I'm 6'2". 
So I was I was 6'2 when I was 13, which, you know, really tall, tall, long arms. I was super skinny at the time. But I was supposed to be like 6'8, like over two meters tall. And so basketball became the really obvious choice. I was going to camps. My dad was, uh, you know, giving me the opportunities to, to play. And uh, I just stopped growing. Then I started growing hair and, you know, I never I never stopped. So. But yeah, I was I was 6'2, 140 at that time. And I, I got good at basketball. Yeah, my high school was, um, my high school had 20, uh, 2,300 kids in it. So 2,300 kids. Basketball team takes 30 people for JV and varsity and freshman year made it onto the basketball team as the white kid, which was fun. And uh, what, what, and played sophomore year, had a pretty big year sophomore year, was still on the JV team though. So I was frustrated. I've always had an issue with that, like authority people telling me that, you know, well, you're not good enough. I'm like, I know I'm good enough. Come on, you know, like that sort of thing. Even if I wasn't, I'd just be sitting there like, what do I need to do? Come on. And I played soccer through eighth grade as a goalkeeper, but uh, I, I, we lost a penalty shootout. Eighth grade, eighth grade playoffs. In eighth grade, for those that don't know, it's 13 to 14 year olds. Uh, it, it, we were in our playoffs, our regional playoffs, our quarterfinals. We went to a penalty shootout against a team we'd already beaten twice that year. St. Mary's, I still remember the name, and it was on our field and my parents were right behind the goal. We lost, I was the goalie, we lost the penalty shootout. I got hit, I mean, right down the middle, hit the forearm and spun in. And we lost the penalty shootout in 10 because I missed that one. So I, I, I was very emotional as you can imagine as I am playing football manager. I was very upset by this. We're gonna keep Pablo Ruiz around. And I promised I would never play soccer again. I'm like, you know what? Screw this sport. That's that was not fun. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna not do this again. I'm quitting the sport. Like, all right, that was my executive decision. But then, you know, basketball. We go from sophomore to junior year, which is we're tra I'm transitioning to the varsity basketball team. And we work out all summer. I mean, I am, I have never had great endurance ever. I mean, not for a lack of trying. I just, my body is built for short sprints. I'd work out all the time at this point in my life. And was, we had practice every summer and it was like every day and we're just doing, and, you know, it was crazy. And I, but I'm, I'm a sell, basically I'm selling my soul to get, uh, I'm, I'm selling my soul to get good, enough to be to be on this team and I was a shooter I was a scorer I was I knew I was good enough I scored you know like 15 points in the last high school basketball game I played which ended up being that last game in JV I hit the game tying three with 45 seconds left like I was turning a corner the last day of the practice the coach came up to me and he said I'm going to start you on JV this year uh, because we don't have a roster spot for you and then I'll, I'll move you up you know if we get an injury or if we go, as we go through the year I'll never forget it. We, we were in the gym and they had, there was a five on five game going and there were three of us on the side, right? So 13 people in the gym that are supposed to be on varsity. And he went to me, 12 people made the team. And told me I was gonna start on, on JV. And he was like, look, I know this is probably you know, tough to take, but I think we need Denzel on the team. You know what, Denzel? Did they need you? That's my question. Anyways, there was some conspiracy theory that like the cut, you know, there's always this weird stuff that goes around the locker room. Like I had a really good home life. Denzel did not. And so coach wanted to, and at the time, this makes me mad because I'm like, yo, I it, none of this matters. I'm better than this kid. Right? I have worked my butt off, lost five pounds I, w I couldn't afford to lose, getting over the line before Din's, you know. But uh, I hope he's doing well, man. He was a good kid.
but I was furious about that. And then that whole that whole rumor swirled around. It's like, yeah, he didn't take you because like he's he's not worried about you ending up okay. And I'm like, this is sports. Anyways, so I quit. That was it. I was like, screw it. I just went app. I just went as hard as possible, and I didn't get it. And I was like, all right. You know what? I, I I'm not playing on the I'm not playing on the JV team. I've done that for two years. I'm done. All right, whatever. So I, I was okay. I'll just run track, right? I'd already stopped playing American football as well because it's just not fun to play. It hurts. <laughs> it's just painful. The coaches are you know annoying. I was chafing. Under the, yeah, well, American football coaches are a special breed. I played American football my sophomore year. I played five different sports over the course of high school. I ran track freshman year, pulled my hip flexor, and then stopped doing that. And then I played American football my sophomore year. My mom didn't even let me play it freshman year. I played it. And then if you've never played American high school football, like in Florida, Florida, Texas, Ohio, Georgia, California, it is just poor. You're like 14 years old and you're lining up in the Oklahoma drill and it is you and another 14 year old all hopped up on Mountain Dew with 100 people around you. And you've got one coach on, it's called the Oklahoma drill and one person has the ball and the other person's trying to stop the person with the ball from getting to the other side of the square. And he blows the whistle and you go and you hit each other as hard as you possibly can. And then when you lose, because that dude is 240 pounds and as we've covered, I'm not. You've got this dude in your ear because I played defense, right? And so I was a safety. You've got this dude in your ear, the defensive coordinator, who I swear would still hate my guts if I ran into him today, in your ear like, you're never going to be a man. You're never going to be a good father. Are you going to let your family like that down? You you just let your family down now. You're going to let your family down in the future. You go run to that tree and back, Shannon, and you're going to come here, and you're going to hit somebody. You're going to hit somebody. And you're like, dude, I'm 14. I'm not fighting Rome. Right? This isn't life or death. This is your part-time job. You work at borders. No offense to borders. I miss bookstores. And that's not an over-exaggeration. I wish that was an over-exaggeration, but it's not. That's what actually happens. I had a football coach ask me if I was sure that my gender was correct because he didn't like how hard I hit somebody. He thought I might have been missigned. And they'll say stuff, they, they will say stuff like that to you on a daily basis. Sounds like Z is soft. Yes. Why do you think I played safety? I just pranced around and knocked the ball away. But then you got to do these tackling drills. No, I, I'm like, I got him on the ground. Apparently I didn't get him on the ground with the appropriate enthusiasm. They would say this sort of stuff to just to just everybody. This sort of stuff. And then the talks before the, you know, like before the game, everybody's putting on the eye black. Dude's got a giant duct tape cross in his locker. He's like on one knee in front of it. Looks like a freaking crusader. Coach comes in and he's like, boys, you know, huh? your adulthood starts tonight. These are your brothers. And you're so hopped up at this point. You got your hand on everybody. You're like, yeah, bro. Like, fucking, I love you, dude. Like, oh, this is... 
you know. And then you go out and lose 13 to 6. You come back in, breaks the clipboard. We are running tomorrow. And you're in at 6 a.m. tomorrow running laps and pads. You want to know why American athletes are so freaking intense? That's why. The people that make it out, American football in particular, it's insane. It's insane. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Woo, boom. Funniest thing ever happened, though. We were playing at home. Can't even remember who we were playing. And we were getting all fired up. You know, they got the big banner, high school football. Woo, you know. And we're all bouncing around like, yeah, hey, huh, 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 you know. I didn't play. I was on special teams. So I'm over here like, man, I hope we play well today. It isn't going to be me, you know. We're bouncing around. And all of a sudden, the captain of the team just poof, runs through the runs through the thing. And we're like, yeah. And we come flying through the banner right in the middle of the national anthem. I mean, it goes over there like, by the dawn's early light. And the team just, boom, sprinting on the field. We stop halfway. We're like, oh, sorry. My bad. You know, stick it. And then after it's over, we don't know what to do because the whole team's just standing in the field. Other teams on the other side of the field like, on oh, these idiots. Like, well, yeah, I'm sorry. Oops. My bad. It's five balance and seven agility. You find deeply concerning, Tebow. <sighs> Away. Anyways, that's American football. It's a cult. I love the sport to death. I'll watch it all day long. Didn't like playing it too much. That is, it's, it's American football. They, they will degrade you just incredible I, 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 I don't know if I can properly explain what it and you practice all day you play 10 games all season all year you practice like every day but this is so that's my sporting experience right I also played tennis for a very short amount of time that was only on sheer athleticism my parents are both good at tennis I never was good so those are the sports that I played so this whole basketball thing happens right and I and I leave the basketball team but he's like come by my office uh and if you want to talk about it if not I understand I just never came by his office that was it I was done I never showed up again uh and, and that was that and so we <laughs> I'm assuming at this point that I'm just kind of done playing sports at any high level, right? Like I'll just go back on the track team and just use that to stay in shape or whatever and just run the sprints. And then I'm sitting at lunch with this guy who's now engaged. He was on the team, on our soccer team. And he he's like, you played, right? We're at lunch. Evan Renz. He's like, you played soccer, you yeah. know? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, I did in uh, middle school, you know, played some travel ball, whatever. You should come out for the team. I'm like, what? Why? Because, uh, you know, our team is obviously very good. They're top 20 in the country at the point that he's asking me. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not going to go out for the team. Like, the tryouts were a month ago. He's like, yeah, we no, we we need a goalkeeper. I'm like, what? Oh no, we we only like yeah, the tryouts were a month ago, but we only got like on, we only have one goalkeeper. Like, there's no other goalkeepers at the school. So I'm just sitting there like, okay. And he's like, yeah, go go talk go talk to coach. Okay, he was a math teacher, so I go to I go to the coach's office. I walk in. All right, hey, what's up? I heard you guys might need a goalkeeper. I played in middle school. You know, I don't, I haven't played since, but sure we can, we can, uh, 
you know, I'd love to, I'd love to give it a shot. He just says, okay, we have practice today. I'm like, okay. He's like, yeah, just try and, uh, j j just come on out and, uh, we'll, we'll give it a run through. You can go through a practice or two and uh, see how it feels. <laughs> what? So basically just like trying to figure out if I was competent or not or something. And so I leave school and go to Dick's Sporting Goods. I buy gloves for $25. And I remember the price, the shoes were $30. I buy $30 cleats. Boots. Yeah. Zedda's keeper myself. I used to hate it because how much pressure you have to put up with. But over time, you learned to appreciate the position and those who choose to be one. I didn't even choose it. I was just, I basically got offered a trial. Yeah, I go to Dick's Sporting Goods. I buy the cheapest cleats I can find because I don't know if I'm going to stick. I have no idea. You have all the information that I had walking through that Dick's Sporting Goods. He wants me to go to the practice and feel it out. What does that mean? I don't know most of the kids on the team. I'm just going to show up and be like, hey, remember me from not at the tryout? And I buy the cheapest gloves, the cheapest boots I can find, and I go to the practice. I just drive on over, park, walk up, walk up to the coach, and they're like, this is our goalkeeping coach. I'm like, hello. And he's like, all right, we're going we're gonna to set, you know, what? <laughs> we're going to set you up in this goal. All right. Christian, the other goalkeeper, is going to be over there, right? And we're going to line the team up in the middle. V num, you know, what eventually at a certain point over the course of this season reached the number six team in the country ranking line the team up in the middle we've got our two you know two other coaches laying the ball off at the top of the box and the team is just going to shoot and alternate going back and forth that was it i hadn't touched a ball in three years hadn't touched a ball and they just lined up in the, the first thing we did in the practice they just lined up in the middle and went on a cycle and I'm like okay what did I used to do so I, I walk around the goal all right make my line at the edge of the six with my with my cleats so like I'm oriented in the goal and then they just start shooting and I just start trying to save as many as I can. I'm getting covered in dirt. It's Florida. It's hot, like really hot. And I'm just, boom, ta, ha, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm like, I mean, at this point, you're just kind of blacking out. This morning when I woke up, I was not on a sports team. And now 12 hours later, I am trying to stop shots coming from this, you know, like arguably the best high school soccer team in the state of Florida. They did it. The whole practice. That was the practice. The whole thing. And it finishes. And I'm over here like I can't even feel my forearms. Like the power is something, you know. That was the entire practice. The goalkeeping cut, it ends. The whole team goes over there. The goalkeeping coach grabs me. And we walk over to the field. Like I was walking back to the group and then he grabs me and we go the other direction. He hands me a ball. He's like, punt it. And I punted it. And then he put the ball on the ground. He's like, kick it. And so I just like lined up and go, but I was a kicker for American football when I was, when I was younger. Like that was something I always loved. So, you know, puts the ball on the ground, kick it. Okay. I kick it. And he's like, cool. Like literally one each, just hands me the ball, punt it. Okay, puts it on the ground, kick it, okay. And then he just goes, okay, we're good. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and then the team breaks, that's the end of practice. And coach comes over and he's like, yeah, you wanna come back tomorrow? And I'm like, All right, sure. Well, you didn't have the opportunity to mess up the kicks because I didn't even know what the heck was going on. 
Thank you. You want to come back? Yeah, sure. All right. And then I went to a couple of practices. And then at a certain point, it was fairly obvious to me without anybody telling me that I was then on the team. I saw myself get added to the roster. Right. I had to provide my height and weight. And I saw myself get added to the roster online. And I'm like checking every day. I'm like, so am I on the... And I was on the team. Two months later, starting goalkeeper got suspended for a month and a half, and I started for two months for the number eight team in the country, three months after I was supposed to be on the basketball team. That's how it happened. They needed a backup keeper, and that was it. And then he got suspended. He had some choice words for the referee in a suspiciously quiet stadium from across the field. League suspended him for a month and a half. We're playing on the road against Plant City. And Coach Ebright looks down the bench. He's like, Shannon. And I'm over here in La La Land like, what? He's like, you're in. I'm like, no. I'm like trying to find my shin guards. I'm freaking out. He walks over, puts his hand on my shoulder. He's like, you know, they're not going to start the game until you get on the field. And I'm like, good point. Very good point. I have to take my time getting everything on, you know, strapping the gloves on. First freaking play was a free kick from the wide area. Came in just looping like a mother. And I run out like... A fr like a Greek god and go for the one-fisted punch and it goes off the left knuckle and goes that way and I'm having three heart attacks at the same time. We're also down a man at this point because the keeper got sent off, which is why I'm in. So I had to sub in for somebody. So I come out with the one fist, it goes that way and everybody's like, ooh! You know, I had a clean sheet though. They did not score on me. They didn't score on me. And then we get the call the next day that he's suspended for like a month and a half. And I'm looking at the schedule and there's like this huge tournament within that range. And I'm like, of course there is. Of course. This is absurd. What is happening right now? Now, how did you do? I mean, honestly, considering how outrageous the circumstances were, I was pretty good. I was pretty good. I, I had no tactical understanding of how to play the position. None. I do now understand a lot more about how to play the position than I did when I was at, than when I was actually playing it. I was big and athletic and had a tractor engine for a foot. And so that was my junior year and that was it. I played for two months uh, that year. Uh, we made the state championship game. We lost, but I played in the state championship game because our keeper got a yellow card for handling it outside the box. When you get a yellow card, you have to come out of the game. You can sub back in though. And so he had to come out of the game for the ensuing free kick. And so I had to come in and save the free kick in the state championship game, which was another where are my shin guards moment because you got the TV cameras everywhere. Three months ago, I was on the basketball team. No, I mean, I was... Yeah, I would like to think that I still am, but I was... I was a really athletic kid. I had a real... I was really fast. Obviously, I was one of the sprinters on the track team. I could dunk in the prime of my life. You know, so I, I had like a springy athleticism to me. Yeah, Williams Lester the third's not his name. His name's Kyle Lester. What are my stats? Um oh I have stats apparently. Somebody's found my stats. Uh, seven games played, one goal against, 11 saves. And six clean sheets, brother. Those aren't complete. There's no, I, I there's, there's no way that's complete. 
but that's at least that's some of them now there's a clip of me the only tv game i played actually i mean there are a couple tv games that i played the big tournament was a tv tournament and then the state championship game was televised and i played in that the funny thing is when I'm running on the field in the state championship game, my mom has the footage somewhere. I've got this mop of hair. I'm wearing Christian's goalkeeper jersey, which Christian is still, he was the starting keeper. Christian is still convinced that that's why we lost the game because he didn't play too well in that game. And he thinks it was because he was wearing my goalkeeper jersey, which is great. And... I'm running on to the... So we had to switch because the referees show up at the state championship game wearing the exact same color Christian's wearing. And I'm like, great. And so he's got to wear mine. And then when he's coming off the field, he's like trying to rip the jersey off and hand it to me because we only have one goalkeeper shirt because his favorite goalkeeper shirt's the same color the refs are wearing. And you're like, ah, great. And so he's incredibly superstitious. Now he's all wigged out, right? He gets sent off the field with a yellow card and can only come back in at the next dead ball. So I got to go in. But when I come in, I have to put his goalkeeper jersey on. So it looks like a mess on TV. But when I'm running on the field, they had my stats. And I'm like, where the hell did you get those? They have my save percentage, my goals against average, my games, my saves. I was an honorable mention for my region that year. Uh, so my numbers were pretty good. Which is funny because Christian was all first team region and I was honorable mention. Which means there was only one goalkeeper on the second team that was like bet <laughs> between us. Apparently there's highlight videos. I don't know if I could show those. I don't know what DMCA rules have to do around... Uh, I imagine they're not incredibly prolifically impressive. Quite, oh, mental's in the toilet, dude. I Like I said, but I was very honest. I was, you know, I was a good, honest competitor. That we When we were playing in that tournament in the group stage, the dude kicked it from like 40 yards and it's like noon in Florida. And I it was in the sun and I just jumped and I swear it was over here. I had no, you know, I was backpedaling. I jumped and I thought I had it and it was there. And I'm running over to the side and coach is like, what happened? <laughs> like at halftime. And I'm like, I just missed it. And he's like, just tell him you lost it in the sun. So that's what I still do. I still say I, I lost it in the sun, even though I, I just flat out missed the ball. I'm 6'2". Z catching a ball, I think, is this you? I, I'll watch it on my other monitor. Uh, yeah, that is me. That is me. That's my goalkeeper shirt. That's the one that Christian had to wear in the state final. Look at those sweatpants, man. I was an icon. I'm red. I'm not yellow. I'm red. It was orange, actually. I was number, uh, yeah, zero. I was zero. <laughs> yeah, I punt you. If there's a punt in there, I punted straight out of the 1980s. Like, you know, straight up and down, like hold it flat right through none of that side winding that's what christian did the side winding punt i was all about just i was all about the moon shots you know just cranking it you know the funny thing is we got a silver medal in the state championship and then senior year christian didn't get suspended so i started a few games you know here or there as a backup keeper does but i didn't have like a long run and um yeah I, I, but i it, it, I think we lost in the state quarterfinals that year. It was brutal in extra time at home. Uh, I played in that game too. I was not good. So my soccer career ended pretty similar to uh, the way that it ended in middle school.
it wasn't a penalty shootout i just wasn't good i was responsible for one of the balls that went in christian tore something in his knee and i came in in the second half and there was a cross and i should have gone for and i didn't and it went in God, I remember blake wilson he I, blake wilson might not even, he probably remembers who i am but we were not like particularly close we were just on the same team he was really good and when it went in i remember he turned around and he just gave me a look like and i just look back at him i'm like dude i know i know the moment it happened you know you know and i think he said something he was like come on man like it wasn't loud it was just like a you gotta i was like i i'm aware and uh christian then came back in they taped his knee up and he came back in because it was his last game too and he was the starter he didn't want to miss it and so they did a whole thing with his knee and he went back in and played the last like 20 minutes Well, it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, if, if I was out there, you're playing Russian roulette. I mean, our team is so good, right? Our team is so incredibly good that if you're rolling with me, a kid who, I, I mean, what what breeds quality in, in soccer? It's consistency. I didn't have it. I had the ability to do good things. But I hadn't played. I had a three-year gap. All these kids have been playing their whole life. They're all amazing. I'm over here just winging it, trying not to embarrass myself, right? And I obviously was doing an okay job, but there's a certain point where every once in a while you just get caught out. I thought about crosses the wrong way. I thought about crosses the wrong way. I thought about crosses as I could only get them if they were in the proper location. Uh, but what I've recently, or not recently, but eventually learned too late is that what really determines whether you can get across is the loft. And so I thought about it the wrong way. Yeah, so that happened in front of a sold out stadium. All of my classmates there to partake, which is good. But you know what? It was a very fun two years. I played, I, I joined a club team during my senior year to try and get uh, college attention. I got very limited college attention, uh, but really, you know, so of course I ended up on a goalkeeper battle on my club team too. Uh, and that's when I got a severe concussion. Like I broke my cheekbone right here, senior year. I played fraternity league in college, yeah, which is really fun. Because if you put, if you spend a lot of time playing at that level and then go play in fraternity league, you ru you destroy people. Are we hunting wonder kids or listening to my sports life? We got into the very long story of my, my, my very Disney-esque story of how I ended up on the varsity soccer team in my high school. It is a rather insane story. We're also hunting wonder kids. But yeah, I, I, I broke my face right before that last season. So after the first season where we got to the state final and then in that summer, I broke my face, got a severe concussion. I never, I, I never was quite is good after that but that is that's the story broke my face played the senior season a little disappointing in the last match but you know it was it was fun on the team had a great time and uh then after that i i looked into walking on i i wanted to go to the university of virginia at that point and they had just signed the united states u21 goalkeeper to a scholarship to play there and i was like all right never mind How'd you break your face? A knee. It's pretty easy. As a goalkeeper, you just sliding out to get a ball and some guy tries to jump over you, but he's got the vertical leap of a toad. Well, actually, they have pretty good vertical leaps. Uh, a snail, a... Hmm, a toddler somehow couldn't jump over me and decided to jump directly into my face. 
which I didn't have much of a choice in. So when you go out as a goalkeeper, you're supposed to do this. You're sliding like this, right? So that your forearm is here. So that if they hit, right? I was here, caught a knee, like due to the full sprint the other way. You can imagine the concussive force. I'm running out, going for the ball that he took a loose touch on. He's running the other way, tries to jump over me and the knee hit me in the cheek. I, I'm assuming it hurt. I don't remember it. My first memory is my glove and going like this. And there was blood. And I was like, huh. Interesting. Interesting development. And then I don't remember anything for the next 30 minutes. But I remember that. Next thing I know, I'm in the concession stand talking to some moms trying to figure out what's going on because when you're in that situation you're really disoriented because you obviously don't have the full picture of what's happening it was fun this is now my longest committed relationship i like this guy I keep looking back at this guy and I'm like, you know what? I kind of, uh, which do you want? Do you? Well, he's definitely going to stay. Luke Cappen's the guy that I think we might need to dump. I, I don't know if he, I don't know if Luca Cappen has the physicality to play in the double pivot that we are going to require him to play in. And he is most certainly more of a center back, but he's, Honestly, could I just play this guy as the center back? He's got 14 jumping rage. I could. Which money? Yikes, my dude. Yavarich, I like as well. Uh, Loop, how are you? Are you? No. So that's the story. That's the story of how I, I ended up on the team. That's the story of my, you know, advanced soccer career at that point. Um... Yeah, it's definitely, it's like the plot of some show. I know it was all, it was very weird while it was happening too. I'd tell anybody that could listen. Obviously I like telling stories, uh, but yeah, it, it was, it was a crazy time, crazy time to be Zealand. And then it ended. And then I just played fraternity league sports and that was it. Uh, when doing a building a nation, how many leagues do you want to load? Uh, well, probably if you're, I'm assuming building a nation in, in Europe, I wouldn't say that the fact you're doing a building a nation should change the number of leagues that you would load otherwise. That's my answer. <sighs> Will we play a game today? Excellent question. We got into a long story time. You know what? Sometimes that happens. There's nothing contractually that says we have to advance a crazy amount of time every day. <sighs> See, I actually, I think this guy really does fit the way that we want to play. And to a T, he is very dangerous in and around the box. He facilitates wonderfully. He's not an athletic. I'm going to end up keeping too many people on trial, though. And you know what? This guy does the same stuff and he's better than Jimmy. So I'm going to get rid of Jimmy. I guess that's the downside to trialing all of the good players at the start here. Hey, Zed and chat, don't forget to smile. I appreciate you sharing the love, Fitzik. Thank you for the four months. Hey, Kaj, I'm glad to be your longest committed relationship. Ramohan, I appreciate the uh, two months. Jeff, I appreciate the 10. Back to work. Yeah, Zealand. Come on, man. Get back to work. What are you doing? Play some freaking football manager, dude. Joke's on you. I like playing football manager. Hmm. But there you go. Now you know the story. You were here. You heard the whole story. That's the story. That's how I came to be here. Discovered football manager sophomore year of college. 
after tearing my ACL playing fraternity league basketball because I involved myself in that too. That was my peak, really. Scored 22 points a game in that league. How's our Solomon Islands where you're doing? He is developing. Probably a couple of great hints as to who I am as a person wrapped up in that story one way or another. Cap I'm certainly capable of faking it until I make it. That's that, that's definitely something that came in handy for the YouTube career because I would just show up in the same Adidas jumper as everybody else and be like, oh yeah, I'm on the team, you know, totally belong. How obsessed were you when you were first around FM? Not really. I had FM 14 for a year and a half before I ever played it seriously. Let me get rid of pole prods. So I like the Croatian winger better. This guy is a, you know, he's a different type of Metsala. He's much more, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I like this. I don't know if I like this Pedro, sorry. He's much more pigeonholed into doing a few things well. Niels Bootsen, I hate this guy. All right, he is so hyped up by every member of my staff. He's versatile. Oh. But he's not good. He's unbelievably okay at everything, unless he takes like, oh, uh, you know, 80,000 a year. I'm not going to sign him. Not only that, despite the fact he's considered four stars, we're just going to let him go. I don't like him. I mean, okay, he's got work rate. He doesn't even have insane commitment. Yeah, he's good for a bad player. That's exactly the way I would word it. Hendrik Hansen's one of the center backs we've been considering. I think we got to wear him down a little bit more. I don't know what, uh, mon yeah, the monetary situation, something spectacular. Dominic Starkel. Another guy that's like, okay, he's balanced. He's kind of bad at everything. He's got off the ball. It's either footedness and versatility or contributing and the fact that he's Austrian is contributing to the fact that my staff really likes him. <sighs> but he's not lethal. His ball control is as good as Venzema's, but Ven like... <sighs> I consider his ball control a negative. Curls ball. Well, he, you know, he strikes a clean ball, so we appreciate that. Dominic Starkel. It's over. It's over! You've lost! Philip Giegel. You know, see, this guy at least brings a lot of athleticism. He's a natural Segundo Falante. That's a man after my heart. What are we talking? 300,000? We don't even know. Fortunately, in this game, we can actually take a look. Yeah, he wants a boatload of money, but, you know, at least he's got something going for him. The fact that he's actually a player I would desire having on my team. Michelle Niemeyer. Well, we did lose the other left back that we keep around, Jal, but this guy's an inverted uh, wing back, which is just not something we're looking to use right now. Add in the fact that he's questionably good enough at best. <sighs> this guy's pretty good. He has an unusually high amount of passing. Somebody that cuts in can play in a knock the ball around system. You can see all of the highlighted attributes like he's got the goods in the good areas. But he's just not great. I think we'll keep Joaquin Mateo around though. Uh, Michael Brandner's another one of those players that's just super hyped up but is not great. Oh my goodness, he's either footed. He's got 11s at everything, you know. Oh, what a player. Don't ask for 400,000. Just don't do it. Don't you dare. Honestly, Brander, that amount of ask, and I'm going to keep you around. Grant Hall, this is the English guy, 31, tries to play his way out of trouble. That means I'm going to want to attack this man at least three times a season. But that mental run from anticipation to decisions is choice the stars mean anything they mean as much as you can trust the person that you have assigned to provide those stars it's in staff responsibilities backroom advice player reports 
So the higher uh, the higher your judging player ability is and the staff member that is providing those player reports, Paolo, the more you can trust the stars. I kind of, them, them, I use the stars as a rough guide, but I don't trust them on every player, obviously. Do, 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 Staff responsibilities, backroom uh, advice. That's where you change who provides the player reports. My GM, I can't fire and is terrible, so. Not, uh, neither here nor there. The only issue with Grant Hall is he is not a high block center back. Works hard, feel for the game, can pass. Reasonable left foot, but he has faded out of the team at Middlesbrough for a reason. I mean, he's going to want a bunch of money, right? English players always want a bunch of money. Yeah, and he wants star player, which I don't really want to give him. And we have Luca Kapun, who I consider to be a very viable center back option as well. So unfortunately, I think even though Grant Hall does a lot of good things, we got to let him go. Geno campaign. Aren't you just... Well, wait, have we finally made it to the bottom of guys that we needed to look at? It's like the longest list ever. Yes, we went three too far, actually. Okay, we did it. Yeah. All right, goodbye to the people that weren't good enough to stick around. And hello to our future, which would be the end of contract shortlist for a little more spice and viv and vibes. Grant Hall, former captain of the club I supported. Nice. Hey, what's up? Livio, how you doing? Hey, Dion, you ready yet? Nope, oh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So, dude, I am so chill. All right, time to offer a trial. Well, we can't do this until tomorrow. Gonna make sure these trials actually end. Niels Bootsen, apparently he's got a lot of reputation as well. Oh, do you, you let Niels Bootsen go? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. We we gave Niels Boots in every opportunity to make the team if we felt like he would have contributed. Then we would have done something. Doesn't have the vision to make him a great passer, lacks the athleticism to be good at anything else. All right, our final match in Spain against Elche. Skin update looks fire. Loving it. Dude, glad you're digging it. <laughs> Next up, Zila model casting. It's only in theaters. It's going to be huge. Any tips for league to manage in? Uh, look, what league you manage in is part of the equation of deciding how difficult you want the game to be. Uh, we're about to lose another scout. I'm going to need to replace these guys. Already lost one. So we're gonna need to replace him. That was McKinstry. McKinstry was one of our favorites. And I think he paid out like a 50,000 compensation or something. There was one person. Hello, Mikkel. We meet again. Dang, really? It's that low? Helmuth Bogdanovich. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. This dude wants a full-time contract for what would be considered well below a living wage. We take those. And uh, Pietro Pacini, if this other scout decides to leave, we've got our move. Maurizio Lariera. For Ivan Geshev. We've got ourselves a new assistant manager, Maurizio Lariera. Welcome, dude. I'm very happy about this. Hope you're doing well. I just got this game last week. No experience in soccer. Well, welcome. Welcome to the world. It's about to expand a lot. 
football manager will very much aid you in that. But Chad, can we welcome Scary Surfer to the footballing soccer world? Whatever you designate it. Just welcome him in, you know? It's the opportunity with the, the large American fan base getting into the game for the first time and the people that message me that are getting into the game for the first time through Football Manager. Welcome. Ladiera is in. The old man completes his move. Trials have finished. But of course, if your trial is finished, then I actually want to keep you on the team. You're the players that made it through the first culling. <clears throat> I miss Luca cop on once. A lot of cash. A lot of cash. And a daddy's good center back. Duje Yavorovic is the wing. I'm probably most likely to sign. Oh, well, let's say as the break glass in case of emergency. Midfielder Hendrik Hansen's another good center back option. We'll just continue to see how we feel about those guys. Cassiani's done a deal. And I'm delighted to welcome Maurizio to the club. All right. Maurizio, my man, you, uh, you can take over a lot of different aspects of training. Like right there, and then Ari Van Lint can coach here. He can help spell this. Ari Van Lint's about to lose his job, so... There is that. This our coaching's getting a little better. Do I have any staff responsibilities tied to him? Advice and reports. I mean, do I trust his opinion on stuff? That's the question. I don't remember. We signed him like a stream ago. Uh, yeah, unfortunately we do. Oh, Lucas Fisher is absolutely not providing. You know, Antonio Moore is providing feedback. He's providing the recruitment advice. Uh, player development. Right. I forgot they made that change and made things much more convenient. Except they literally only made it on the player development and not for player reports which is wild where's my assistant coach weird that he's not there all right we got that handled maybe he'll be there after a day i hope he'll be there after a day TV deal set. Anderson and Bonico not going to be ready in time. Yikes. Dean, thank you so much for the 45 bits, my dude. I have 3K hours in FM. I never saw that screen. Hey, oh, it's a bug apparently. Oh, that's unfortunate. Can't figure it out. They don't allow the assistant coach to do that role. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So we got to find somebody else in our scouting staff that we trust to do that instead. So the TV stuff looks like it's actually changed our schedule. It's weird. Okay, staff search. Yes. Judging player everything. Uh, we're going to go with Philip Eulafroy. Youth information, Philip Oulafroy. Thank you. Okay. Got it handled. Trials reoffered, and now that that is done, we can go offer trials to all of those other guys that we want to offer trials to. Saw it. I feel like we had a couple of player lookups that we have uh, got to get to. We had Akinumi Amu, but that was an hour ago. So if we could refund uh, Comfy stocks, they're comfiest socks I can read. 
uh, I it took way too long to get to that and uh, don't want them to uh, to miss out on what they redeemed but when Jason Cummings we can do that one right now oh hey Lucas Pierce scored the 15 year old got a goal that's good What's this on? Oh, Simone Benedetti. Apparently he's the big reputation guy this time around. Hello! Hey! Yeah! Ha! Ha! 16-year-old that can ball. Western Sydney Wanderers, Vince Brody. Oh, I didn't mean to put a match practice. Uh, hopefully I would have seen that uh, when it was actually coming up. This guy. My dude, how you doing, Vince? He's interested in a transfer at 16 years old. He wouldn't join the team for a while. Uh, I'm not going to have that conversation yet. Let's at least finish the preliminary scouting stuff first. This guy's definitely worthy of a trial. Santiago Brunelli. I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid, boss. I am not drinking the Kool-Aid. Josip Posevic into the maybes category. Daryl Lockman. We finally started scouting Daryl Lockman, a center back that I've been interested in for a while. Took us a little bit to get our team, our scouting department on board. And of course, our scouting department already lost one person, so on the verge of losing another person, so we're having to replace a few people. Love the 17 heading, even though he's short and can't use it. Way to really work on the parts of your game that are going to be most influential. Arno Vashuren. Just don't think we can swing that much money out of our transfer budget. And very Ponet. He's just been offered a new contract, but we really don't want him to have to sign it. So we're offering him to you as well. Let's go get those trials that we wanted. We're keeping Jimmy on the uh, on the short list, you know. We're keeping Jimmy on the short list. All right. Not all 17 of these people are going to take this deal. Oh, one of the one of the month to month guys actually his club accepted the trial, which is pretty wild. And Lars News Bomber, his club rejected the trial. He's dead to me now. Lockman's old, but that is no barrier to me needing a center back for a season. I mean, is this guy on my end of contract list? Because he's, outside of his fabulous hair, he's not good enough. Kit Fisto, thank you for the prime, dude. Thank you for the two months. It's actually insane how good your face pack for new gens is. I love you too. It is really, really cool when you get it working. Yes, it is very cool. I, uh, it is a, I would say a guilty pleasure. It was a dream of mine from the time that I started playing the game. Uh, and for it to kind of come to fruition now is is really or you know last year when it really came to fruition and now being able to update it for this year really great
Daniel Sourer. Which makes it sound like he's in a really bad mood all the time. Well, Dennis, you got great hair. You're going to be a huge hit on TikTok, but unfortunately, going to have to let you go. Ruiz Diaz. Sorry, boss. Somebody got in a fight with me. Somebody just went public with an issue that we were having in the locker room. I just saw that at the top of the inbox. Lucas Cano. That's fine. Ah, Marchetta. Marchetta's upset. He has to fight for his place. Smile. Daza. Thank you for the three. And uh, congrats on that. Jason Cummings is the lookup. We're going to get to that right here. Right now. These are all match reviews. Okay. Yes. I just did that. I just fixed that. I just talked to this guy. I am... Uh, Just move on, you know, just move on. All right, Jason Cummings, he's at St. Johnston. Jason. Ah, Jason Cummings, what a player. Ah, St. Johnston, brilliant. He was down in the championship, got bought by St. Johnston for 180000 to come play in the Premiership again in Scotland. Uh, he put in some good work with Dundee for a couple of years, bounced around the League One championship sector of England. Nottingham Forest at one point bought him from Hibs for uh, $1.3 million. He was just banging in goals down in the championship for three seasons. Went up to the Skybit Championship, did a loan with Rangers second half of the season. Played well, did alone with Peterborough in League One, did alone with Luton Town over two halves of the season, then went uh, to, well, Nottingham Forest. And Shrewsbury Town in an undisclosed deal, played for them in League One for two seasons, made a free move back to Dundee, and here he is. Back where he started in the Scottish Championship. Sweet. So he's had that long wandering career and now he's been brought back up to the Scottish Premiership to try and regain his former glory. My friends and I wanted to start an online save. We spent a full day figuring out how we could create a club and an online save and we did it, but it was a process. That does sound like something that would take an absolute minute and a half to figure out how to do. Is Elon Lord managing in Italy right now and the two non-EU player slots per season is hurting anyway? No, I mean, there's no way around it, no. I think there are some countries exempted and you always want to keep track of the countries that where it's it's like cleared up and all of a sudden they're in the EU. Torres is under contract till 2026. I don't think he's going anywhere. Same with Bicoro and Ware Pone. Sorry, boss. It's just not, uh, you know, it's just not what we're looking for right now. You're doing okay. By the way, Spear still hasn't signed. We are literally waiting for that. My AC is off. I just realized I am hot. Alrighty. Ugh. Offers made for Donis Avdashai. Well, that's not going to make my day. We wanted Donis, but he is over here. I don't think I can play for you. I don't know why he sounds like that, but it's really weird. Uh, do you have a short list for my trial list indefinitely for them to show up after they finish their trial? 
Huh? Your trialists automatically show up when their trial ends in your inbox. If that's not happening, then something's wrong with your inbox. Haste and acceleration are no longer a weakness in this game. I beg to disagree. Try to move the ball to his left foot when he starts to dribble. Okay, Alexander Nuri. Yeah, well, our coaches are fine. Well, they're in flux. We're waiting for a work permit. It's a long story. Yeah, I am paying close attention to the development of two of my youth team's star players, I promise. Well, aren't we just building a team full of guys that are supposed to get better over the course of a season? Isn't that nice? Oh, we're okay. We're okay with where we're at staff-wise. We can't overspend. We did lose out on one analyst, didn't we? I think we have one analyst that's on a month to month. A recruitment analyst, Christian Appeloner. Who absolutely does need to be replaced. So let's go ahead and do that. With the person we signed decided they signed a contract somewhere else. They didn't want to do it anymore. That's fine. They signed the American center back. He still hasn't made his decision. So we're just sitting here pretending like that's not hanging over our head like the sword of Damocles. Great analyzing data on this guy. And he's getting paid nothing. So this should be easy. Uh, can we get a recruitment analyst spot for you? And we'll pay you like, I don't know, an actual living wage. What? What is that? You don't look as good compared to the other guy. I'm not excited about it really didn't want to be a recruitment analyst apparently you're Preference for recruitment analysts and staff is full. It is full. It is full. You know what that means. Full. Not some philosophy test. It's not glass half full, glass half empty. That is full all the time. Full. Dude's a chief scout. No chance he takes this. This guy's a recruitment analyst. Maybe uh, he, uh, how about this guy? Huh? This guy's a recruitment analyst, Todor Velchov. Oh wait, he turned down being a recruitment analyst. Man, well, how about you, man? You, you think recruitment analysts, you want to be, you, you want to analyze data for a lot more money than you're making now? I wouldn't want to either. You're making zero dollars now, just in case you needed a reminder. This guy wants like actual money. I've been backed into the corner by your negotiations. I feel we cannot continue further.
great. The worst one. The worst one. I was doing this out of courtesy. Now I got to pay a $30,000 compensation to get you. Vaseline. Vaseline Milev. What the fudge cakes is going on here? But he's still a significant improvement over the melon on my staff, which is Christian Apple owner. So boom, there he is. Vaseline Milev. Welcome to the staff. Happy to have you. Ben Ortiz gets his work permit. Ari Van Lint is out. Ben Ortiz is in. And we are moving and shaking in the staff department. Oh! With us, right? With us! Now we wait on the work permit for Spear, which he will get, because we're paying him well over the amount of money required to get him an Austrian work permit. Yeehaw, baby! And now we gotta decide what to do about Ian Ortiz. Can I just be happy for five seconds? Oh my goodness, I am happy. Our scouts finished the deal. What do we think of 18-year-old right back Ian Ortiz? I like him. He's got the stuff physically. He's got the stuff mentally. He can tackle. We can teach the uh, marking, but his positioning is sound. He is a really creative uh, right wing back. I like this deal. 100000 a year. That's it. I like, I like the way it's situated. No main concerns outside of five determination, which is the fastest moving attribute in the game. We can fix that. No problem. Yeah, and he's got sick flair. You can't teach the flair. You can't teach the tackling for an 18-year-old. He's a young 18-year-old, too. He turned three months ago. <laughs> he has eight free kicks and tries them from long range. That's the flair talking, okay? Strength and marking are warning flags, both trainable. That's what we care about. And his potential, we haven't exactly drilled down from scouting, but we've drilled down his attributes, and I think he's a contributor immediately. Uh, learning right back this season. Not to mention, we need somebody that can play that position. And we don't have to pay to get this guy. We literally just get him for... For that. Ian! Availability, yeah, his availability attribute is 20. And he doesn't cost a lot. American bias? No, I mean, whoa. The American bias is the fact that we don't have to pay to get these guys. We scouted the bejesus out of the U-20 World Cup. Fastest moving attributes, determination. It can change abruptly because of life events and also if you have the right mentoring group, somebody with higher determination, you can drag it up pretty effectively. The chat seems split on whether it's a good move. Jay Fernandez, Merry Christmas to you too. Thank you for the two months. Joseph, thank you for the prime. And welcome to the Hammers. Enjoy that bacon next to your name. We're getting him. Ian Ortiz, welcome to the team. You're going to play against Vaklamarkt immediately. And the potential's five. Let's go! All righty, kids. Defensive positioning. That's what we're going to be working on first. Y'all just have a good time now. Add to training camp squad. Yeah, fly to Spain. We're flying home tomorrow. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. Oh, we've finished our scout on Tom Smith. I want to say 
behind him! But he can't play for me for two years! Oh! He doesn't want to do a deal. He's too young. He doesn't see the full picture. He doesn't want to do a deal. He's got all the talent in the world at 16 years old. It's going to be an absolute stud. And we are going to keep track of his career. We cannot sign him now. He has zero interest. He does not want to do a deal. Paint the picture for him then. United States of Vienna. There you go. Hey, look, the U.S. team brought a lot of promising kids to that U-20 World Cup. That's what I'll say. Uh, Jonathan Noah. Well, that didn't exactly pan out, did it, Jonathan? Tom Smith of Canada. From Peachtree City. He's 19. He's 19. He's not going to get there. He might get there, but I don't think he's going to get there. All right, let's take a look at the guys that we're trying to move, which would exclusively be Prissa Kenne. Prissa. Prissa, 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 Prissa. What are we going to do with you? All right, I'm going to take him off the transfer list, leave the asking price of 22000 and he's going to be the other right back on the team. Okay. Where is Marchetta? He's got a good value. He's unhappy. Is any real interest in moving? He's just signed a new contract with his club. Happens to be this club. Be happy with that asking price. But on the high side, 800,000. Guarantee you he complains. No way. There it is. No way that's the asking price. These agents, they don't know the players at all. You know, they, they don't even, they don't know. Way above his value, way above his value. 475,000. That seems right. Oh, for the love of all that's good and holy. Ah! Yeah, actually, can I make him leave? Yeah, let's do that. Wow, I hate this. I've ended up at this screen before. I have to apologize, dismiss his concerns, convince him to stay, or threaten him. We got plenty of players that actually want to be here. There we go. Now he wants to move. Okay, Margetta, Draga Margetta hands in a transfer request. Cool. Let's move you. He was already mad. He was in the last year of his contract. He's not doing a lot for the team, and he does have some physical value. We'll see if uh, him being motivated to move is going to help stir up teams to be interested in him. We hope that is the case. I also hope Spear is here in time to play against Vaclamark so we can get a look at our guys. Oh, nope. We do have a few injuries, just a few. Ortiz to be unveiled. Oh, Ian Ortiz. It's like my coach. Uh, is Ford Store for Social Group easy enough for someone like Ian or Ortiz to settle into? Yeah, I'll settle in just fine. We're bringing in a couple of people from his neck of the woods, Canada, the United States, so he'll be able to find guys to hang out with. Yeah, I, look, these guys were at the U8, uh, U20 World Cup. You got to watch them play there. You know they've got the quality. They've got the sauce. A loan for Manuel Albanes.
We won the battle for God's Power Tower as well. We should be refining that scouting report so we can make an educated decision. But ladies and gentlemen, Caleb Spear. has decided to sign his contract. The incredibly high potential, uber consistent, left-footed center back from the United States who can play the entire back line, a fact that I didn't even notice until just now. The only concern we have is the development of his tackling long-term because we know his strength will come in. We are signing kids that can grow with this team now up to another level. We are signing kids that can grow with this team. And Caleb Spears is one of those kids. He's coming in. He can grow with this team. He can grow with this team. So can Ortiz. So can Nolan. So what we want. Guys that are going to come in and grow with the team. Two new, three Americans in the team, Nolan, Spear, Ortiz. Then you working on that defensive positioning. You are going to be training rather hard, my man, Caleb, but it will be okay. Wait, I got to check these trialists. We are working on God's Power Tower, right? That's top of the pops, I hope. Close to it. Nice 10. I'm going to prioritize it to 1 to make sure we get that done. Cancel the assignment on Warren Shimbe. Noel Arena is the right back we were looking at. Yo, Ara Penny, thank you so much for the tier one. And welcome to the Hammers. And oh, Vigo, I see you. We're about to, hold on. Hold on to your hats. Wow. Five gifteds from Vigo. John, Yogan, Sakurada, Chadwick, and excellent. Welcome to the Hammers. Vigo, thanks for throwing down the gifted subs. I think one of those guys might end up being in the U.S. national team. There's no way all three of them flop that hard. You know what I mean? There's no way. I like this guy, too. He's really cheap up front. He's got great pace. His ball control is sumptuous. Weirdly bad passer. No nonsense fullback, but with that pace, he can definitely, if he receives the ball, he can attack the wing pretty quickly. Hang an inquiry. Maybe else we'd prioritize. Bradley Maldonado, I know, is the striker that we were interested in. We might be able to pick him up for free, too. Which would be perfect. Then we'd have Imbicogu, we'd have Maldonado, we'd have Venema, and we'd have Joao Oliveira. We'd have four forwards. That we don't hate. Then this dude can hustle. That burst? Mm -mm. That burst. That's a burst of pace right there. Nah, well, not like, like the... Change the direction and woo! Oh, true with Tommaso Panico is uh, another American. And Dietz coming back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dietz. And we've got the 15 year old. This guy's, this guy could be a good pickup. We just want that scouting report to end. You know, I don't think anybody else is in the race for him. So, scouting report end so that we know, right? We want to know. And once the scouting report ends, then... Oh, we didn't check the freaking trialist. Then we'll be all right. Vojanovic. Oh, that's our scout. Great. We got to wait for our scout. Our other scout's currently trying to negotiate a deal. So it hasn't hit me that Bruno Piri has left. That's sad. The Piri is gone. Eddie Silvestri. That sounds like an Azerbaijani name to me. 
That tracks. Oh my goodness, Zealand, you are looking for people already on your team. They're already here. You just gotta sort by expiring contracts, you will see them. Joaquin Mateo. Stays around. Michael Brandner. Stays around because of affordability, I remember him. Gino Campagne. Well, Gino is not good. I think we probably could see that coming, but Gino, Gino is gone. And then we just double-clicked our way out of that. Roni. Roni! My dude, what's up, Roni? How you doing? I don't think he fits into our team. We already have him, but Kogu, he does the exact same thing, and he already knows all the guys. And then Buchta is the one on the day of the match, and my goodness, Julian, you are... You're very gone, Julian Buchta. Very gone. Oh, how I want you, Arthur Hovhannisian. Oh, how I do. Is this Sylvester guy's any good at all? You have three lookups? Oh, shoot. Uh, Phil Jones. Damn, are you sure we actually looked him up yesterday? Um, no, I did Jason Cummings. And what I wanted to do was refund Akinumi Amu. We did Cummings lookup. And Akinumi Amu, we wanted to refund. It's got six of 28 caps for Azerbaijan. Brazil? Spain. He's also in Golan. Okay, this is weird. I would have assumed he was just playing in Azerbaijan. This dude is like actually Aziri. Oh, of course, his name's Eddie Silvestre Pasquale Rafilov. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, but he asked like 10 minutes ago. Uh, we did check Phil Jones yesterday. As Nasiri mother, according to Wiki. Fascinating. My bad, dude. Way to wrap your way, way to wrap your home. It's a big box to box guy, too. Different type of midfielder than anybody we have. Why you opted out of your contract? What are you mad about? Time for me to leave, I think. I won't disagree with you. We've been trying to find a team that is interested in signing you, and yet we have not. Absolutely not. I'm a little disappointed we haven't found too many stud. We found the we found a Canadian stud. We found a couple of American studs. Honestly, Cameroon kind of came up empty. A lot of the places, you know, like Whoa. Be honest with you, I don't like any of those clauses. I want a million dollars up front. Coming off a catastrophic hip injury? I think we gotta take this, dude. Dude just got hit with a hip injury out for five months. And I wanna throw a million dollars at it? I think you just 
it's a no-brainer i'm like i'm looking at it to, to to try and figure out if it if it is not wait rocky bashiri doesn't have a deal yet rocky oh my god rocky oh i thought you signed that deal you what happened to your work permit dude rocky 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 okay we're at rocky 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 dude rocky hey roll I, i'm really wait no that's not what i wanted to do uh bashiri oh man rocky bashiri's just been hanging out brander got an offer from Vacker innsbruck kawaii is looking at into contract hey, we're taking this sorry a million dollars for tomaso panico i'm taking that it's a complete no-brainer and now we're looking at rocky all of a sudden this guy's just reappeared in my life I'm very keen he's looking for 312 to 449 contract wise thanks for your feedback i an offer in for him from aberdeen that's gonna be tough for us to compete with rocky but i'll be honest with you You'd make our center back room outstanding. We wouldn't even have to start Bumberger. We'd have Spear and Bumberger as the backups for the starting pairing of Rocky Bajiri along and next to the Hungarian. Oh. Yo. Uh Bashiri, I'll hard lock your release clause at two May, and I'll hard lock your relegation release clause at zero. I'm gonna take off the sell on fee percentage, but we'll drop that to three. Relegation salary drop. I'll remove that. I'll remove the optional contract extension for the club and I'll add a team of the year bonus. That is a beefy 40,000. Rocky, 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 man. Avoid relegation bonus has been added. That's fair. International cap bonus, which is fair. You're probably not going to get that. Um, season landmark goal bonus if you hit five goals in the you know, over the course of the season i'll pay out twenty three thousand. you know really attack those corners with a passion rocky you didn't move roll roll i'm gonna need you to move okay rocky bashiri for three hundred ninety thousand. We knew we loved him because he was high level, but is he really that high level to warrant that crazy amount of money we just put on the table? I don't know. But I know that if we offered him a trial, he would have taken the Aberdeen deal tomorrow and we would have never gotten him. So let's see if he takes our deal. And if he does, then we can wait and, uh, and, and scout him up. We're thinking about the future of the club. That's why we're bringing in young players like Caleb Spear. Great things are happening, chat. Yeah, that was our uh, Nahuel Arena, 110,000. That's enticing. Uh, Helmuth Bogdanovic. God's Power Tower, it's been granted. We have a contract in for God's Power Tower. Homeboy is going to need some good hidden attributes to make that contract worth it. Helmuth Bogdanovic, welcome in. We got a scout. We are delaying. That's our first delay on God's Power Tower. Helmuth Bogdanovich is in. We got like four balls up in the air right now. Assignments for Helmuth Bogdanovich. We got Central Europe, Western Europe. We don't have the Southern Europe assignment. Oh, that was our loan assignment that's gone. Ay, ay, ay. We only really have one of our South Americas going. Uh, what about Giorgio Repetto? He's got a little knowledge that's South America, so we can do South America North. From Giorgio Repetto. He's got the Spanish. All right, old man. Give me South America North. Scouted potential ability. Excellent. For transfer. With a max transfer budget of $1 million. 
Go get him, tiger. Oh, he's our lone guy. Oops, oops. My bad. My bad, dude. My bad. My bad. Okay, John Krajirik. Hey, Vigo! Wow. That's five more gifted from Vigo. Thank you so much for the five gifted cats. Alpha Betaller, Kajumo, Statkin Dave, and Shamifying. Welcome to the Hammers. <laughs> you know, a little tickle in the throat, huh? Interesting. All right, Krejcik. I am looking for really hot prospects in Austria, Johan. That's what your job is. We need God's power for when you pray to the FM gods. What do we just trot out God's power tower and be like, see, we have brought your servants. Give us your favor. Conceding a lot of goals to the back post. How do I prevent this? Oh, some bad things for Bradley. Inconsistent. Really struggles with adaptability, which means even though we have some Americans here, it's not going to be the easiest for him. And the potential's pretty capped, but he's fairly professional. And he's obviously very dangerous with that first step that he has the ability, the natural ability to be either footed and put the ball into the back of the net, which is nice. But it's not all gravy for, for my boy Bradley Maldonado. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is he worth a uh, hundred thousand in wage we'd have to lay down to get Bradley in? Now, if you're conceding a lot of goals to the back post, you just need to take your zone and shift it backwards. You know what I mean? He either ends up good enough to play or money ball because he's American. Yeah, I think he, I think there's value in the play. I just don't know if we're the type of club that can sign someone like this yet strictly just to sell him. The either footedness and the finishing is great. The inconsistency is not. The adaptability is a more mild concern considering the cadre of young Americans and Canadians we brought in. I think if we had a suitor for Jerry Mbakogu, we'd bring Bradley in to replace Jerry Mbakogu because he's definitely somebody that can contribute, but... Vigo, thank you so much for your 11 gifteds, by the way. That's so kind. Let's check our other stuff. Brandner's decided not to come back on trial. He's done a deal with Ocker Innsbruck for a lot more money than we were going to pay him. Shout out to his agent for finding the deal. Uh, Ian Nodder. Well, that's a report that we don't need to see. Ronaldo Tavares. Okay. You are in the target, man. Yahtzee. Yes, please. God, we need another target, man. We need another second striker. Samuel Major. I know that's not how you say it. Ooh, there's a 17-year-old Peruvian that's got the jazz. 
Well, I think we're definitely not getting Maldonado now. I think we keep him on our short list for sure because he's a really talented 18-year-old. When's his birthday? January, so about halfway there. Uh, Jose Goizeta, this is somebody that we are really looking forward to getting that report back from. Simfemwe Mabane, no. Uh, Dalibor Vilmirovic. Mm, well, no. Eddie Wilkeen, okay. Sounds good. Is this in Cameroon? Okay. So this is a fair amount of speed. That has my interest in... Oh my goodness, it's Jose Antonio Cardo from ODFC. He just came through our scouting. Oh my goodness. Two years starting center back for ODFC. Jose Antonio Cado has just come through our scouting center as an available trialist. The worlds collide. Dan Rotz. Dan Rotz. I love it. Don, can I just say I'm a huge fan? Alalade. We already stopped with us. The Alalade love affair. Wow. Jose Antonio Caro. Will Keen's already signed a deal at uh, MK Dons, but Jose Antonio Caro's at the club. Incredible feeling. Bradley be a decent pressing forward. I mean, yeah, with that commitment, the burst. Oh, Francis can indeed, can't he? Well, that could be fun. He's something of a gifted free kick taker, too, and his picture so well cut out. I'll say I don't know if you're going to be the best center back option for us this time, but he's still resolute. He's still a dime piece, isn't he? Then, Katie, we've got we're getting a lot of like decent wingers. You really just got to lock in on the guys that you like. Machado is transfer listed for $75,000. I'm not going to make any particular moves on that. All right, tomorrow we play away in the Samsung Cup first round. This is our moment. Hello, Z, you feeling healthy today? I am. Yeah. I've aided my health by barely going outside in the past week and a half. Those who missed it, will you do a brief off-season roundup? Our off-season's far from over, but we have made some big moves, which we appreciate. Yes. Very professional headshot. You know, somebody paid for that. I don't know if it was the club. I don't know what was going on. Very nice headshot. Well, aren't there just a lot of numbers that look good? Problem is the three to seven agility means he is a liability isolated by himself. Hussein Balic, Marchenko. I remember not loving you, Marchenko. So we're just gonna go ahead and no thanks. We are officially done in Spain on our way back to Austria to play on the road against Union Vaclamarkt in the cup. After a month of preseason to build up to this match and wild wheeling and dealing, which is just, you know, what we do. Mauro Dos Santos. Well, you know what? You're 34. He was very unlikely anyways. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to move him. Uh, we just, uh, we're not finding any suitors right now. Let's talk to him. I, uh, very disappointed that you haven't found a way to solve this problem, right? I don't need to do anything. Um, his assurances will come when he plays well enough and consistently enough to know exactly where he stands. I don't particularly want to discuss this. Only doing what I think is best for the team. As he, as he, as it stands, he doesn't deserve them.
So we got to back down then. So I've got to talk to him now. How does that work? I've never had to, I've never lost one of those conversations before. Do I have to go to him? Or do I just have to desperately scramble to get him off the team? Looks like I got to go to him. I've just got a double prize. I have a double promise to get him off the team. So we are desperate to find somebody that is going to take Dragon Marchetta off the team. We start negotiating the move for uh, Nahuel Arena. situation dragon yes somebody the old baited by a loan offer or alban essay Don't have to pay any fees. Just come, just come get him and give him normal playing time. At least we've got interest now. Teams that are like, oh, look at this. Reduce our current payroll. What about, you know, I pay a bit of his wage. You pay 300,000 and pick him up. How much, how much of your payroll do you need to get rid of? Jeez. All right, Vince Brody, the scouting is finished. We've got ourselves another sensational 16 year old that has uh, interest in looking to sign a deal, but he's under one of those scholarship contracts in Australia, which means we'd have to spend real money. It wouldn't just be the whole free American free-for-all sort of thing. So Vince Brody's going to get a prioritization. Rocky Bashiri's going to end up over him in God's power. Tower is going to end up over him because we are waiting on scouting reports to sign both of those guys. And we're up to the match, our first competitive match of the season. My goodness, we made it. Get rid of the trialist. Give me a team that I can play. All right. Akush Kashkesh and Daniel Bumberger is the defense. Uh, Prisa Kene is not going to start at right back. We're going to start Ian Ortiz. As he learns to play the position, he will be fine today. Um, Ian, there you go. Uh, Kashkesh, Slavija Radovic trying to regain some form. Where's Olivier? Olivier Custodio. That new mouse cannot come quickly enough. L not Olivier Custodio. That's Jean Oliveira, Zealand. There is a difference. Get rid of the U18s. That looks a lot better. All right, Caleb Spears is going to play instead of Bumberger as a central defender next to Kesh Uh Nolan's going to play as a ball winner, but we are going to move further. I right, know we're going to stay deeper. I'm not going to change our tactical prep for the season. I didn't want to use this formation, but I think our team's actually going to fit this formation plenty fine. Oh yeah, we have a million dollar transfer with Tommaso Panico being negotiated. That's a nice little uh, reminder that things are looking up, even though we're struggling with the locker room a little bit. And then Graham and then Radovich. Bumberger on the bench. Schmidt not on the bench. Marchetta not on the bench. Chris Kenne on the bench. Oliveira in the starting lineup. Mbikogu on the bench, and Conte is there. Okay, and then we have one more substitution spot that we are going to give to Lucas Pier. Our fabulous... No, we're going to give it to Lei. <laughs> Not quite an opportunity for Lucas Pier to play because we want to see what our team's able to do. We're going to be a little more aggressive. 
and we are going to jack our lines up. All right, let's do it. Showtime. Oh, wait. Our right wing is Rafael Leai, not Albanes. And Albanes still should be there. We need a wing sub. Captain not selected today. Well, oh, we actually, uh, our captain, vice captain are both gone. Cool. Forgot about that. That feels like something that's important. Bazirovich is gone. And uh, three substitutes out of the substitution squad. I uh, believe it's... Ew. Oh, I know where. No. There he is. Oh, Venetian, you sneaky, sneaky man. Ian Ortiz, is eight available? It is not. You get 15. Caleb Spear, you get four. All righty, kids. Here we go. Let's go win ourselves a match. They broke their club. Their cl Salzburg broke their club transfer record for assigning Suso. Happy for them and their supporters. Let's do it. Up the door for his new season. Let's go take care of business. All right. Let's get off to a winning start, shall we? Like an emphatic winning start. All right, Graham. Oh, little shakes, little bakes. Oh boy, Olivier, Oliveira, Venema. Smart, smart play. Didn't force it. Very smart. Ortiz. Got to uh, they've, oh my goodness. It's a, I mean, I mean, ref. Great job, referee. Supremely well done. Obvious pen, very obvious, great goal. goal. Team goal, really. Goal. Lovely team goal for Floridsdorfer. What a pen. You know that, I've heard that's a great omen for the season. Listen to that Floridsdorfer traveling support. It's rocking in here. You know, it is, it is rocking in here. Ooh, nice ball, Radovich. Graham. Oliveira. Radovich. Nolan. Well, he works hard, you know, and that matters. That a boy, Spear. Well, that a boy. Great challenge, Keshkish. We'll give him shots from there. But good timing in the challenge from both center backs to disrupt that early move. Oh. Blackman's the best goalkeeper on the face of the earth. He's quite literally the best goalkeeper that humanity has ever seen. He saves those types of shots with such startling regularity. It's, it's crazy. Now, what are we doing, man? Every, every time we tune in, we're just turning the ball over. Thank you, Radovich. All right, Custodio. This looks a little bit more like us. Lay I, lay I, lay I, lay I. Custodio! Oh, unfortunate. I really need a much better season from Slavija Radovic. He was so bad last year, he lost his starting spot towards the end of the year. But we know his talent. We've reevaluated him in training. We know that talent is still there. Oh, that was nice. Venema. Venema. Classy buildup from the triangle of Custodio, Oliveira, and uh, my boy Venema. And then Venema just, <laughs> you know, well, well, All 
Nice. Venema make the pass. Yes. Oliveira's in behind. Great touch. Bad finish. It's a saucy little caress with the left foot, though. And Venema's a decent passer. We saw that there. So we don't lose the playmaking that we have when Jerry and Bakogu's on the field. Hmm. Oh, Custodio to lay eye. Beautiful. Oh! Olivier makes a tick over. And Raphael lay eye tucks it to bed like a child. All the way from the Solomon Islands to the score sheet again. Raphael Leai. What a quick burst and a tidy finish. Solomon Essi. At it again. And a boy. Look at that. This is what I'm talking about. This is good center back play. You know, Puchiger, he would have still been running forward. Watch Spear. He sees it coming. Swivels the hips, anticipates the through ball. He's there in an hour and a half before he needs to be. Perfect. And in we strike off Oliveira. Venema's not exactly on fire to start the season, but still. And not to mention, Spears very athletic. He's there. Makes a great play. The Akash Kashkash is on a 7.3, Spears in a 7.0. They're reading the game, blanketing the game. Venema should have scored a goal, at least one by now. Nice. Levi Zaradovic not laying a, a massive egg, which is nice. Here's Ortiz. You don't expect much out of Ortiz or uh, Nolan in this match. We're just playing them there to help them acclimate to their new positions. For crying out loud, Nolan's a natural center mid and has no awareness of how to play defensive midfield. So that's something we're working on. All right, Graham. Oh, Slavija. Beautiful, Venema, my goodness. Oh. Well, really happy with our creative force in this first half, but uh, Venema seems to be struggling. Nice header by Spear. And I know we're just looking for every little thing that he does well, but that was, uh, he threaded it between two opposition players right into Nolan. Ortiz has the ponytail. You love it. Stodio. Ooh. Ortiz. Nice. Oliveira. Get in, son. Oh! And Ortiz with the assist. Put it on a plate for Jean Oliveira. What a triangle with Ortiz surprising the defense on the run first. Oliveira first to it. Bashes it into the back of the net. Venema must have poor vision because he can't see the net. Fair. I'd like to maybe make some changes here soon. Got to got to be able to dominate the lower league teams, and uh, we've turned it on. Venema, oh, that was his best shot of the day. I like the fact that he hasn't lost his confidence. That's nice. Six crossing, but you know, Ortiz is a technical specimen. That technique raises the floor of everything, you know, the ability to execute obvious technical plays. Radovic, ah. Oh. And he's very creative. Ooh, no. Nolan, oh, that was Custodio. Oh, Ortiz! Can't play right back, by the way. Oh, Ortiz! Oh, no! Venema! Oh, what a play by Ian Ortiz! 
jumps the pass, flips the ball up to Vainum, arounds the keeper, and gets denied. Great pressure, great pressure. Oh, Vainum, Oliveira, what is happening? What in the world? Oh my. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, it was great. I had a great time. I just want to kind of rewatch that. All right. From the beginning, what just happened? Oh, that's definitely not where I wanted to be. I'm so lost now. Where were we? I just want to watch the eight consecutive blocks again. Oh, uh, not here. Oh, I was on these ensuing plays. Okay. Was it? Why is this so hard to find? Fifty four minutes, thank you. Oh no, it, it was it was right here. Okay, so the chaos ensues. Here we go. So we have Ian Ortiz making a great play. Guy can't play right back. Boom. Steps up. Interception. Sees the field. Flips the ball for Vanema. Beats the keeper there. Shot is blocked. Gobrich starts panicking. Clears it off his own player. Now Oliveira saved. Oliveira blocked. Custodio blocked. Cleared. Awesome. Just a tremendous effort by us to not score. We had to really try. Oh, haven't we just parted the seas here? What in the world's going on, guys? I get it. We literally just baited him to taking in 25-yard shot against a goalkeeper he doesn't have a prayer scoring against, so it makes sense. Good block. there again popping up where he should be oh Oliveira nice touch again lovely for me in Ortiz Leai Oliveira how is this not a goal dude how is everything we're doing not a goal I mean we are just lobbing it up for guys that eat these types of chances for breakfast and we're just breaking them all um hmm Slavi Zhiranovic with the predictable 9.8. Love it. Uh, Oliveira's on two goals. Venema's going to stay in. I think we're good. I think, you know, nobody's like exhausted or in danger of hurting themselves. We'll just keep playing. Oh, Graham. That was a, that was a lemon. Oi. We get a Bumberger in. Cash Kish a little tired. Oh, we just were volleying it around on a throw in. Keeping the spice of life. Stodio. Nolan. Baradovich. Graham. Dude, don't tell me you got worse balance than a guy that's playing non league ball in Austria. Full credit to them. They are chucking numbers forward. 
They're going for it. The bum burglar. He's back. And winning headers immediately. Not entirely happy with the way we've played. I think complacency has a part to play here, but we have been outplayed the last 10 minutes. I know I'm not, oh, there it is. I know I'm not making tactical changes to like compensate for this, but I shouldn't need to. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. We keep getting, they keep just swarming the middle of the park and we're not doing a good job of stopping it. Yeah, whatever we dominated, we should have scored five goals, but shaky stuff, shaky stuff there. Wow, that was a perfect pass from Albanese and what a finish from Oliveira. Simply sublime. Yeah, that is the ex-Chelsea Jamal Blackman. He's uh, been, he, he is, it's God and Jamal Blackman on this team. He's an incredible goalkeeper. Well, Nolan, that wasn't exactly timed up. Venomous had a nothing second half, too. After multiple goal scoring chances. Well, we won. Uh, but the finishing bugaboos there 4.08 XG, three goals. That's a lot of missed chances. And we did give up some uh, some balls in towards the goal. But I got to praise the team because we out XG'd them by three. And that's, you know, that that's worthy of praise towards the team on the road cup match. Okay. Yeah, them scoring was not undeserved. I absolutely agree. Uh, Venema, uh, Venema contributed enormously to the team. His movement was obviously very dangerous. He just didn't, uh, he didn't provide the, fin the, the end product today. And that is, that is unfortunate, but he impressed overall in his debut as part of the buildup. And of course, Oliveira finds a way to miss a bunch of chances and still score multiple goals. He really is uniquely talented in that regard. Can't criticize Karim Konate for some reason. I can criticize Marchetta's training. Can you get me out of the match? Man. Wanted to just be feeling a little better after that match. I still think there are some holes to the way that the way that we play and probably need to probably need to do this, to be honest with you. Probably need to do this. I like Dean Ortiz, though. I thought he was promising. I thought Spear, particularly in the first half, looked pretty good. So I have no concerns about those two guys. Nolan showed his cons. Nolan showed his cons, but that's okay. Well, oh, we've had some tough decisions to make today, and we've got some more tough decisions ahead. The old brain is drained. Have you bought Adler something nice for Christmas? Yes. Thank you for checking. No offers for two players. Great. We'll offer him out for 150, see if anything happens, but we'll find out the answer.
tomorrow. I'll find out the answer tomorrow. I think we're going to go ahead and call it there. We've had a really heady, um, a heady run through the offseason. We had a lot of fun telling the story of my high school sports career, though. You know, that's that's what it's really all about. We're going to raid somebody. Uh, we do have a fun video coming out tomorrow that I, I really hope you guys are going to love. Uh, we've got, let's see, somebody to raid, hopefully. Somebody that we're eyeing up right now. This dude's wearing a Browns jersey. He's got followers only chat on, though. Nope. That ain't it. I was all ready. I was all locked and loaded for the raid. But followers only chat strikes again. Just, you know, it just ruins the fun. Uh, this dude having a, having a wonderful time. Let's see. Do I refund lookups? Yes. If we did not get to a lookup, just refund it. My apologies. Uh, but. Yeah, refund the lookups. My bad if I if I didn't get to yours in particular. We shall do it tomorrow. Yes, we shall. I'm feeling good about this team though, man. I mean, I, I think that we're we're building our team the right way. We've identified a pool of, you know, easily accessible, free to get players that are, you know, we're we've got a bench that's full of players that are developing, that are getting minutes, that are getting better. So we're not nearly as good as we're going to be in a few years' time, at least with the current collection of players, which is great. I think Keshkis is a huge get at center back. Bumberger's got a year in the team, played wonderfully towards the end of last season, so I'm really happy to have him back. Custodio looks like a magician already. Anderson coming back from injury. We're going to have a heck of a pair in midfield. Could use another midfielder. Right? We could use Vanderhurst, to be perfectly honest, the American, but he's 17, and I don't think he's going to be available until next year, so... Get a copy pasta ready. We're coming in hot. I think right back, we're going to have to rely on Prisikene a little bit, which I, I'm not super excited about because we're not getting any interest to move him. We're not getting any interest on Marchetta. I'm, it, I'm, it, I'm weirded out by how little interest we have in those guys, considering the Austrian second division's right there. They know who these guys are. But I'll see you tomorrow. We'll answer all these questions. Enjoy the video that comes out tomorrow morning. It's a nice one.